Yeah, yeah buddies, it's the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. I'm Gail Bennington. We father daughter radio show, the history of radio. Uh, I heard Vito's opening, and I agree with him a hundred percent. That Duke basketball team was so exciting last night. There's four freshmen. They're gigantic. They're fast. They look like they've been playing together for 10 years. I don't even know what's happened to the world anymore. How do these kids... And they're only going to play one year in college. We can't hear you. We don't have you. Three of them are the top high school recruits. Like, one, two, three. The fourth guy is, is only number 17. And they broke freshman records on day one. Like, two of them broke the record for most freshman points in a Duke game on night one. Yeah, I don't, you know, man, I don't need to get into it. It was a Fre- fr- Freshman points in a Duke game is not the <laughs> excitement we're talking about here. This kid is so big, he would be the second biggest, like, heaviest player in the pros if he went in now. He's so big that he shouldn't be jumping and shooting and passing like this. What's his name, Williams? Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson is, you are going to have to buy your kid Zion Williamson sneakers. That already sounds like the perfect, like, star basketball player name. See, go out to, for Juliet. Get her Zion uh, Williamson sneakers or the other kids are going to be making fun of. I definitely will. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were getting us the good chicken today. That that place was uh, not easy to deal with. Oh, uh, What are you saying? What, where was I, guys? Is that what you were asking about? Just a regular morning for me. Uh, me, Ricky Gervais, Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, mm, my God. Oh. Whoa, la di da yeah. I was um, the guy that had nothing in common with their problems. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, me too. <laughs> I get that. We should put all of our money in a pile and then divide it up three ways. <laughs> That's the only fair thing to do. <laughs> Makes the most sense. Man, that is so exciting. It was just a very, um, just a casual, it's Ricky's uh, podcast. Uh, are we giving out tickets to that Ricky show? Yes, we are. We are giving out. We're giving out uh, seven pairs of tickets to Ricky Gervais and Friends, a work in progress with Ron Bennington and Jim Norton. It's happening at the K Playhouse at Hunter College. Why are you doing the whole thing? I just asked one question. We're not giving them away now, right? No, not right now. No. But we're going to have to re- reread that thing. Because um, everyone's already got their tickets that won them, except for our people. You just got to be in New York. All right, we're going to do that in, uh, well, sometime this hour. Uh, Matt, what's up? Welcome, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Ronnie. Yo, yeah. did you see that uh, special on Coach K on ESPN? I don't think I need to see one. I mean, I'm pretty, you know, it's, we're all pretty aware of who he is. Is there something I don't well, know dude, about he him? Has, he's been around forever. Yeah. Well, he has all those kids over to his house for, like, barbecues and everything else. And I'm telling you, it's one of the reasons why they're so damn good. Every basketball like coach man. adopts the kids, no matter who they are. <laughs> He's like, you are my family, because this is their life blood. I mean, they're making millions and millions of dollars. The kids are making nothing. And they, you know, hey, if you need anything, because you, you don't have a bunch of them like you do in football. And uh, most of these kids are only going to be in college for a year. Probably all of them are only going to be in, in college for a year. And the interesting thing is people used to fight that and say, like, if you want to come to this school, you got to promise me you're not going to walk out on your teammates. And Coach K is like, just give me the best kids. You play one year for, for me, and then go make a fortune. That's his plan. Right, because they can't, they can't make money in college, right? Well, unless they want to get some from drug dealers. Oh, okay. There's that's... always money to hang out with drug dealers. <laughs> but yeah, that is... I always think that's really insane that those kids don't make any money. But now here they do. They They make this... They go to Duke, and I'm not even a, a college basketball fan until March. And everyone said, you got to see this game, you got to see this game. And I put the game on, and I'm like, oh, holy shit. I think you already got, got to go back to like the Fab Five before I saw that kind of young talent that way. I remember what happened to them. They fucked themselves. 
That's what I do. I sing like a, <laughs> I sing the end of where I'm going with some. Like if uh, someone does something bad, I'll go like this. They fuck themselves. <laughs> you know who else does that? Jerry Seinfeld, Ricky Gervais. Oh, cool. I actually said to them, I go, should we get in touch with Chappelle or Rock? I mean, should we keep this thing going? <laughs> what are you guys doing after? Yeah. No, I was the Ed McMahon of that show. And I told Ricky, I'm saying, I'm just, look, I'm here to support you. Don't. <laughs> but. Uh, get ya. Here's the thing uh, that about Ricky is that he forgets to ask the questions. <laughs> he he's just enjoying himself? No, he just uh, will tell. And um, Jerry would say to him, am I going to, am I going to get a question? <laughs> very, very funny. <laughs> I would invite those guys out and then uh, like at the end of the dinner, I'd just be like, hold on, where's my, I know I have my wallet. So oh, you got yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. They could both sneeze, whatever the amount <laughs> of that was. They could sneeze it out. Um, hey, uh, Matt. Matt, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? How are y'all today? Good, man. Hey, I was just going to call and say, you know, you were talking about uh, the Duke players not making any money uh, in college. Uh, these kids are getting a free ride to Duke. Duke is a very expensive school to go to. So yeah, that's but not guess. necessarily good monetary, but. Well, yeah, but first, what kind of edu I always wonder. Zero. When, that's what I was. Yeah. They get zero education while they're there. They're, they're professional college basketball players right so they're like it's more like their mascots for their college yeah. than anything all right I, I didn't think of that because i don't think of them as mascots but yes they they, they are one of the reasons that people pay attention to exactly duke and i want to go to duke but no they do not get the college education that a kid who was good in math and got a free ride yeah and i don't know if that's right. even a thing so no they're barely going to see the inside of any classes <laughs> because it's time. very, very difficult to play on the level that they play. You have to be doing it all the time. There's only uh, a couple of people that could even pull that off to play at that level. And then you're not going to throw college courses in with it. Right. You know? <laughs> Don't cry, honey. <laughs> I upsetting. want you to hear reality. You need to hear reality. Now, okay? <laughs> I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm not like some of these other grandfathers who are like, oh, did, did you see the tooth fairy in, in, in Santa Claus? I'm going to tell you right now, Jew. They're, the tooth fairy and Santa Claus are the same person. Santa Claus is the one who puts <laughs> money underneath your tooth fairy pillow. <laughs> Boom. You're getting a straight dope with me. That's it. That's all you gotta say. Yeah, it hurts. I didn't like it the first time I heard it. Believe me. She's <laughs> mm, cranky. Is she hungry? I'm hungry. What a good baby, though. What are you looking at papers for? I was just moving a paper. He looked like he wanted to read something. <laughs> a baby was talking, so he wanted to read something. Um, Earl Douglas, did you watch basketball last night, or did you watch your elections? Uh, I watched neither. I was uh, I was at a show last night. At a show? Yeah. Um, Brooklyn. What Bowl. show? It was uh, Living Color, Fishbone, and Brass Against. They had the the what elections. What year was this that you went to this show? <laughs> Who'd you go with, Marty McFly? <laughs> no, they, it was like an election night ish show, and they had the uh, but they had the screens on. CNN and MSNBC. What were they acting like? They're going to make changes. The voting already took place. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it was basically a, a get out the vote. If you showed you vote, you uh, you got in for free. That's embarrassing. You know, they Here's sold the amount of tickets. I there was a woman complaining that we didn't have any get out the vote. Uh, to, I went last night to vote, right? Yeah, and they had already given out the little stickers, and she's like. But I want to tell my friends that I voted. And I go, well, you're an adult. Why don't you tell your friends that you voted? Why do you need a sticker? The sticker should be had, handed to children who go with their parents. I'll tell you why you need it. Because 
the social media is like showing everyone I voted and you want to have your sticker. And I saw so many posts with it. And then I saw posts that said, I didn't get a sticker, but I did vote. That's what this woman was complaining about. I thought she was being ridiculous, but you're saying no one's going to believe an adult? No no one is going to believe. Yeah, I fell in that too, because I go to vote last night. I vote. I'm like, hey, where's my sticker? They don't give me a sticker they ran out. I go outside to the school, and there's a lady with two stickers, one for her and one for her dog. And she's just trying to take an Instagram shot of the dog. I think it's cute if a dog has a sticker on. If you have a sticker on, it's ridiculous. (laughs) If a dog has a sticker on, you're like, who did you vote for, a coyote? (laughs) You can't vote for a coyote, Pop. (laughs) Pop, that doesn't make sense. She looks so tired today. She's sleepy. Yeah, me too. So here's the thing that happened with Vito, and he does this to me all the time. He tells me that he's getting this chicken from this very special place that I've saw on TV, and I wanted to skip. I go, great, because I got to be here at 1130. I didn't even bring this up to you, but I did a show with Ricky Gervais and Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld. Wow. And, uh, and then he shows up with other food. And this would normally have been a great food day. <laughs> this would have been a great food day for Pop. I love when she just looks at me and smiles. Like, I don't know what he's saying. He's funny, though. I can there, tell. There's something about it that I know is supposed to be good. So my mind is running through these changes. Bum, bum, bum. Um, Dr. X wants to tell us uh, in Mexico what it's like when you vote. Go ahead. Gail, you sound like a million pesos. Oh, pesos. Yeah. That's, you, the, that's their ooh, see what I did? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got when it. You, uh, yeah, you, you take out your, uh, the official ID we got in Mexico is your your, uh, your voter card. And when you go vote, they take this big-ass marker and rub it all up and down your thumb. So you walk around, you got to post it on Facebook. But, of course, all you got to do is rub a tire and, hey, you voted. Mm. But that's kind of a cool thing. I like, I like, um... Like the stamped thumb one. I think it's a good look. Well, in Russia, you don't vote for president. President votes for you. <laughs> I think that's how it is. You just switch it around <laughs> that way. Who are the interns today, Earl? Vinay. Did Vinay get to eat? Yes, he did. Are you sure? Not sure. Then no. turn around. And see if Vinay got food, too. I don't like to eat in front of the interns. And Vito does that, and Chris does it. Turn around. Say to Vinay, did you get a sandwich? Did you get a sandwich? Yes. He said yes. Yes, he got a sandwich. Yay! Yay, Vinay! Yay! (laughs) Now, why, when you're standing there, would you just stare, not say a (laughs) word for five seconds, and then say... (laughs) I don't know. <laughs> it's not going to be in your head. You got to reach out with some questions. You know, my ear, my ears, a little shot from last night's show. Be one hundred percent. It's simply not true, Earl. You heard me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm like you're my... wearing headphones. <clears throat> if you can't hear me now, you have gone <clears throat> blind in the ear holes. If we should have a a name for that. When people go blind in the ears, you know what I mean? I think if anyone could come up with it, it's you. Yeah. I got a name for it, but I don't know if anybody uh, wants to use it. Throw it out there. Deaf Comedy Jam. (laughs) (laughs) Yay, look at me. Uh, Hard Rock Johnny is calling to complain against Chris. (laughs) Why? Oh, no. What I did he do this sorted time, this out. Johnny? No, I promise it's not that. Mm-hmm. I swear. Um, now I want to talk about Coach K, if I may. During an election season? Yeah, <laughs> Coach K is, is probably the best guy out there. And I'll tell you, years ago, before I was hard rock Johnny, I was working a hotel job. And I never Coach knew this K, about you. It doesn't have the same ring to yeah, it. Was, I know, yeah, it doesn't really work as well. But uh, Coach K and the Duke team stayed at my hotel when it was uh, during the, when the final, or the Sweet 16 was at the Meadowlands. 
And I was introduced to him because if he needed anything in his family and spent some time talking to him for a couple minutes. Super nice guy. They lost that year. And about three months later, I got a letter from Cameron Indoor Arena. And I was like, oh, what's this? And I opened it up, and it was a handwritten letter from Coach K with a shirt thanking me for taking care of him so well. And also, you know, sorry it was a delay in getting it to me because he had his hip replaced after the season. And just like that's the kind of classy person that you deal with, and that's why you have a winning program because you know how <laughs> to just handle It's just not true, stuff. Johnny. There's a lot of people that are nice, and their teams stink. <laughs> we just fired a guy. I don't know what I did with my uh, phone, Chris. Did I leave it at the Ricky Gervais show? Vito's going to check. Yeah, he's going to go down there right now. I mean, is, could it be anywhere else around here? By the way, I walked in... There we go. We're focusing on the show. I walked into our office today, and it was such a filth hole that I said, why? I go, this needs to be cleaned up. Maybe this is something the interns could do. And Chris says, they can't. I'll clean it up. And I'm like, why can't the interns clean up? He goes, it, maybe they'll throw away, they, they would throw away something we need. And I'm like, there's literally trash on the floor here. <laughs> We don't need those, those Dorito bags. They don't come in and and clean up. I mean, uh, I'm they calling don't vacuum just in case. Um, they, they vacuum sometimes. I think that they don't vacuum your office though, because I think that they see the. <laughs> They've definitely vacuumed it before. They don't vacuum because you couldn't see the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Sky, let's keep it very dark in there as well. What? I have never lost my phone in my life. Wait, I hear it ringing. Where? I don't know. It sounds. I hear a distant ring. Look how much shit is in front of me. Is it attached to something? Is it plugged into something? I don't believe so. It's not plugged in. I just heard it ringing. I heard it calling for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's somewhere among us. This reminds me of Poltergeist. Oh God! I never Caroline. saw it. Was there a phone ringing in that? <laughs> now it's ruined for me. Could it be under this table? Here, listen. Can you guys hear it? Yeah, I hear a weird yeah. thing. Wait, you're calling Chris. Am no, no, I? That, that, I definitely heard Ron's phone ring. I had a, oh my God, this is so weird. I have a full staff of people not moving. <laughs> not moving at all. Chris, I'm calling it. You find it. Hey. I could actually feel it ring. There, there it is. is. <laughs> it was under this, um, these papers. Uh, thank Christ. Text I'll just say this. Them, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> tell them the madness is over. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, um, you never got your sticker, huh? Never got the sticker. And there's some lady in Astoria with two. One for her dog, one for her. I'm, I not, did. I'm not gonna lie. Juju got a sticker, and you did it. Yeah. <laughs> no, be up. Be up. Uh, I did a write-in vote for governor, too. Who's that? Uh, Trump's fat butt, I put. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> And then, you know how you have to write it in and push it through that machine? Yeah. yeah. I showed mine to a couple other people in line. <laughs> oh, check this Pretty out. Pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, well, thanks for wasting your vote. I go, I go, if Trump's fat butt gets fucking elected to this, <laughs> you're going to end up working for me. <laughs> what is it you're trying to say, Chris? You've been picking up. You told me that you're not trying to read something. Yes. And yet I've seen you do it three times. <laughs> no, now I'm trying to read something. But uh, you were doing this before. Yes. Why don't you just read it? Well, and why did you lie to me last time? <laughs> I just don't want to make you upset. Uh, this Saturday, November 10th. That's at good radio. This Saturday, uh, November 10th at 2 p.m. Here at the Sirius XM Studios, Ron Bennington is hosting the panel. That's offensive. Who? Ron Bennington. <laughs> you, Ron Bennington. Why could Ricky Gervais say my name perfectly every day? And he doesn't. He's, He's not even from here. I know. Well, this Saturday at 2 p.m. here at the SiriusXM Studios, Ron will be hosting the panel, 
That's offensive. Can comedy survive the new sensitivity? It's part of the New York Comedy Festival. And on the panel, Big J Okerson, Ari Shafir, Lisa Traeger, and Yamanika Saunders. Go to theinterrobang.com for a chance at free tickets. Dude, I'm in this, and I have no idea what you're talking about. Explain to people what's going on. Ron, you're hosting a panel with Oak, Big J, Ari, Lisa, and Yamanika, where you guys are going to talk about uh, how comedians deal with the new changing audiences in comedy at the clubs. The cha- what are the changing audiences? They're actually changing their clothes? <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're now more sensitive. And the name of the panel is That's Offensive. Can Comedy Survive the New Sensitivity? Well, I love everyone on this whole panel. Yeah, the panel's going to be hilarious. And you go to the interrobang.com for a chance at free tickets. That's this Saturday, 2 p.m. here at the SiriusXM studios. Also, three of those people, degenerates from new... Uh... Three, uh, and then the other one did a Netflix, double Netflix special last year. This is Netflix stardom. Yeah. I'm going to give this away. The special things just drive Jerry crazy. Really? And he kept looking back to me. Right <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Netflix special specifically? or so They're not as good as, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's weird. It was like a it was like a boom afterwards, and now it seems like there's a big push to get them out, speed them up, not have enough time to prepare. Jerry for them. doesn't believe in specials and get rid of your best material. He goes, "Why would you get rid of your best material?" He goes, "The majority of people have not seen it, no matter how long you're out there touring." Right. So, like, just having one or two is, like, enough probably for a career. Then you have your best stuff that you... Well, I mean, I guess that's the difference of, like, if your goal is to be, like, on the road. If you love to be on stage. Everybody who does specials does the road anyway. Right, that's true. They just have to redo their whole fucking act. Yeah. And the bit was, you're not going to write another hour that good. Yeah. Do you think that it was Louie? Because Louie... Was, you know, putting out the mega specials. Yeah, that's true. No, it's not about that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) This is something else I'm blaming Louie. Everybody (laughs) tried to follow Louie with everything. There's no doubt about that. By the way, I don't know whether you know this. He did 75 minutes last night. I did not know it. In Paris. Oh, wow. No, I had no idea. Yeah, they gave away every joke that he said in the paper. And um, said that his, uh, who he's dating and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. Now, was this like an audience who didn't know that he was going to show up? No. Last second, they said. Right. And it's all expats. They went there, Mm -hmm. went crazy, got a, you know. Sure. Like the whole thing is made up that people are offended. I'm telling you that because I've been there. Yeah. Well, I think that that's, that's true. I mean, I think for all the circumstances, it's like the way... The reactionary, like the media reports it, there's a reactionary thing. And then I think after that, for almost everyone, obviously certain specific cases aside because they're less nuanced. Look, I went down and they said protesters descend on the cellar. Mm -hmm. I was there. There was two. And if you don't believe me, look at the picture in the paper. There was two. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) And uh, two nice ladies, two nice young, you know, young people, little handwritten signs just standing there. They weren't like going crazy. They were just saying, you know, um, you know, whatever their opinion was. They weren't causing a ruckus or, you know, trying to stop the show or anything. They brought, they said to uh, a female comic that night, you shouldn't go in. The female comic said, I got to work. You know right. It's what I do. Um. I thought that was funny, like, why the extra pressure on female comics? Yeah, well, that that always that always happens. That if something happens with women, then we turn to women to go, well, why would you be able to? Instead of just saying, like, hey, this is what we expect from, from people yeah. in general, uh, we tend to f- put women up on this pedestal. Like, you need to stand up for the whole of your gender. Well, I would say this for white women. Uh, if somebody said that to me, I would go, well, I do what my husband says. <laughs> <laughs> we're, I, we're a Republican house. Because <laughs> um, last night they were bragging about, it went 49-49. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't be bragging about that. That was the closest they came. Right. The white women. Hi. Uh, white men was 95%. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then black women was like 95% 90, on the opposite. Yeah. yeah. 
Earl, did your mom go out to vote? Yeah, she did. Yeah, of course she did. Both my parents went out. Did she? Did you get a chance to tell her what her your background was? Yeah, I'm going to do that with the with all the Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm gonna, I may hold that for Thanksgiving. That might be the. But if you, uh, um, your dad says to her, "Who was the French Scotman?" You know, <laughs> Ten percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, I think the the French, Scottish, British is going to freak them out a little bit. It should freak them out. Ten percent. Ten percent product of a rape. Mm-hmm. Or an illicit romance. Ooh, <laughs> sexy, but doubtful. Ooh, <laughs> considering history. Yeah. <laughs> Earl, you really would have been a house helper. Because you see it as romance. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's how they t- should teach it in schools. They had some helpers. They were handy. <laughs> they were very good at menial tasks. And they were given lodging. You have you had cotton helpers, and then you had breakfast helpers. <laughs> and Earl, you would have been a breakfast helper. No, I I, I, I would have ran. I would have been trying to run every chance I got. Wait, hold on. Can I just like, I'm too fast to be enslaved? Like, those other guys were slow. Not That's me. the thing when people say stuff like that. It's like it's fucking rude to the slaves. Really people was- do that like with the Holocaust where they're like, I would have fucked those Germans up. I'm like, okay, you're better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like when, uh, when uh, what's his name, said that he would have stopped 9-11 because he would have tackled Marky them. Mark. Pa- yeah, Mar- <laughs> Marky Mark said he would have tackled them. Yeah, he would have taken care of it. He would have saved the entire day. If I was there, 9-11 wouldn't have happened. I met Marky Mark. He could run at Chris and tackle him. He ain't taking him down. Chris would run over him like he was the fridge. Marky Mark. All right. Wherever you are right now, put your hand around your penis. And that's the same that you could do with Marky Mark's fucking waist. He had the tiniest waist of any non-swimming guy I've ever met in my life. He's such a little man. I, I was shocked. Oh, what a little man. He wants. <laughs> Give me. All right. Let's play this game. Is Vito here? Vito is here. Mm-hmm. All right. Because Earl, you're going to play too. Vito, could you please come and use this fucking thing? I don't know what it is. You won't get the right chicken. You're in the other room. <laughs> you know, I hate when they try to share a mic, too. Because they they push each other and then they act like, I couldn't, I couldn't hear. The, wow, that's a really fucking good. dickhead. To, you know, <laughs> I don't want to do it every time. That's a perfect impression. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Fuck, I feel like an asshole. All right. We're going to do a thing with the three of you, okay? Okay. Gail and I are going to be the judges in okay. this. Okay. And by the way, it's 100% that you got to get, so there might as well only be one judge. The three of you, we're going to start with Vito. You bring up a celebrity that you could beat up, and we have to agree with it. If we agree, you stay in. No children. Okay. And let's do this. No women. <laughs> just. That was, was going to be my first. Yes. I know. You know why? I don't want to make bad radio, Chris. Yeah. Okay, I understood. I don't want you going like this all day. <laughs> Pulling the fucking. Every time I see him, he pulls a paper up to his face. <laughs> Vito, give me a, a celebrity you can beat up. Ed Sheeran. I will agree. 100%. I'm washing the floor with Ed Sheeran. Like, okay, <laughs> not uh, we got it. <laughs> Let's not fucking. It's not to the him. death. You okay. know what I mean? We just like to say you I'll beat rip him his up. eyes out and piss down. <laughs> <laughs> Earl, your turn. Kanye West. I don't know. Wow, you went like. Younger man, he's crazy. What? You're not the judge. Oh. <laughs> Why are you trying to play every part? I know. And all of them. This poorly. is a one man show, yeah. dude. <laughs> all right, let me pick it up. Uh, I don't know. He's a younger man and he's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to say it like this. I know you hate Kanye West, but he's got crazy strength. Well, here's what I'm going to say about Earl. I give respect for the fact that it's like my own anger will make me win. You know, he didn't just pick a weakling. Uh-huh. He was just like, my anger will actually crush him. And he didn't go with an easy answer. He went with the wrong answer because out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do you think he could be Kanye West? No, I don't. Yeah. I'm just giving him respect for the pick. I'm not going to give anyone credit for losing. <laughs> no, I'm smart. not the Democratic Party last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did it. Here's how stupid it gets here. Yeah. 
It's Chris Stanley. Steve Buscemi, I think I could beat up. <laughs> <laughs> I know I could beat up Steve Buscemi. I don't know. A, he's from Brooklyn. And if it turns out he's a biter, I feel like you made a bad mistake. Uh, what do you think, Gil? I think he might be, he might win on size because I th- I'm, I only worry he could tire you out. No, I will, I will smother that man. I and mean, the other concern is, wasn't he uh, a fire, a firefighter? Yeah, I feel like know. there's like, I just assume he has some athletic ability that he's got to be in some kind of shape. And he went back to help yeah. after 9-11 where Chris went and had fucking dumplings mm. from a local Chinese place <laughs> and then slept for 12 hours. That makes your pig seem extra shitty. Well, how does that make it extra shitty? Yeah, because you chose somebody who's like a 9-11 hero. I'm going to vote. No. Peter's the winner. <laughs> Yay! God. Damn, I had so many more celebrities I was ready to say. Sure, but you got no competition here. <laughs> Can I pick one? Yeah. Can I do one? Ariana Grande. I feel like I've got to go with someone who might. You could kill so, so, yeah. so I wanted someone <laughs> tiny. No, the thing is, she would beat you in any kind of celebrity put down. <laughs> like she could write a song about right. What a but if it was, fi- but if it was just physical, I feel like I could just take her by her ponytail and just whip her around. She's yeah, so she's tiny. Like, what, ninety pounds. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's anywhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a basketball player I've always told my friends I could think I could beat up, but they don't think I can. Sean Livingston. Let's take a look at him. I just feel like out Spud's of all the up. NBA players, he's the one I have the best chance against. I'm, I fought Spud Webb once, went to a draw. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see you beating that guy. No, no way. You ought to pick somebody else for yourself. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm looking at the bicep alone. And I feel like, you know what I mean? He's got. I just feel like I could be. I mean, he has reach, but my reach is pretty long. My reach out. I have a longer reach. Reach is not going to matter to you. You're not a guy who sticks and moves. (laughs) (laughs) You're just going to need brute strength. You're going to be rolling around on the floor like fucking. (laughs) Like a big fat guy. If we're going to be totally honest. (laughs) Ooh, she out? She sleeping? Mm-mm. Just eating. Oh, how adorable she is! She's starting to sleep. Should I, I yeah. want me to wake her up? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to set off some firecrackers and see it look. No. Her. She's never seen firecrackers before. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a fucking string of them over there. <laughs> you know, since you are the champion, the Producer champion, the greatest producer of the day. Okay. Was this your chicken parm hookup? No, I just I just ordered from there. Oh, so but you were the brains behind this. I was the brains behind chicken parm. All right, I'm gonna cut it in half. You could end up losing this then. All right, nice. Never mind. You're back to a hundred percent because you did nothing, <laughs> and you, I saw how dirty you keep your fucking office. We're cleaning it up. We already started. Do me a favor. Send uh, somebody down there to take a picture and send it to us. Because I, I never go in the office. No. Uh, last time I was in the office, uh, George W. Bush was president of the United States. <laughs> so I haven't been in there since the Bush years. And uh, when I saw it, I'm like, what the fuck? This is yeah. horrific. And um, Chris looked embarrassed but i looked over and fucking vita was just eating chili out of a ladle yeah. <laughs> he had a bucket of chili and he was ladling it into his mouth it was 10 a.m so you know <laughs> why do you keep it so filthy it's not if you notice one side had a bunch of stuff all over it oh bullshit oh, you blame me for this you hoarder motherfucker what right, those right. boxes Wait, who wanted to throw the boxes let's out let's not week? call anybody a whore <laughs> Who wanted to throw the box? But you guys have been told. Yes. And you were like, fuck them. Do you ever see it? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. There is a lot of shit. And now I'm embarrassed that I backed you guys up. Our problem is we let it build. We clean and then we let the, the filth build again. That's the problem. It's the main thing. You mean like all cleaning? Yes, yeah, that's, exactly. that's what it is. Yes, that's the exact problem. Yes. The That's, problem is not the cleaning. It's the in-between times when we're not cleaning. Yeah, <laughs> It's like saying this. I ate three weeks ago, and I've been starving. 
Now you tell me I need to eat all the time, three times a day? <laughs> yes. Think of this as eating. Well, that's you're a- eating the dirt and <laughs> dust. God. That should be the punishment. Did he send it to you, Vita? Not yet. How hard is this, by the way? This is pretty simple. Hey, did any of you guys get me in pictures with you guys? Uh, no. Mm. Why? I was your number one job. There's, there's has to be we're pictures. Gonna be, yeah, they're going to be sent to us. They didn't take any. I was told they did. Mm-mm. Oh, I was lied to. All right. That's why I want you guys to take them. Were you too busy throwing shit on the floor? No, there wasn't any shit throwing. As were far you, as I know. you too busy with that chili you guys were eating? That was just Vito. I mean, you could have at least saved me some chili. <laughs> no. It's, some of that it's, bucket chili. It's my chili. I got you guys dessert, though. That's pretty exciting. Isn't dessert nice? I'm just trying to make up for <laughs> for the office situation. You guys are going to end up on hoarders. Vito is not me. Stop just throwing stuff. Did I ever tell you about the hoarder who lived in my neighborhood? This hoarder had packed their complete house. I think it was a two or three bedroom apartment in New York. Then they got junk cars and a junk van and filled that up with stuff and then had to move it. They, even the junk car, they were putting like rolls of toilet paper around the old (laughs) fucking thing, right? And the guy started to sleep in the junk car because he had packed so much shit in his house, there was no room for him to sleep. Oh my God. So he couldn't sleep inside at all. He ended up getting on the show, Hoarders, but... He couldn't break it. He just, I mean, it's a mental illness. It is, yeah. This was a guy with a fucking mental illness. But the people who lived in the same building in him were terrified because they thought the whole place was going to go up like a fucking, like a, a match. Yeah, that's super scary. I've only once met like a true hoarder. Like I've met some people who have like some like borderline hoarder kind of personality but somebody this woman who had two young kids which like made it extra scary because i was just like afraid like that shit was gonna like topple over the kids so uh not only was her house filled up she also had her card now i didn't know that she was like this it was a friend of a friend right so she's like car two and she's like oh um would you mind riding in the back seat And I'm like, yeah, that's totally fine. She's like, oh, because I have some stuff in my front seat. And I'm like, sure, yeah, that's not a big deal. I walk up to the car. The front seat is so filled up that you can't see out the window. The back seat is filled up. So I had to sit Indian style next to her child in a car seat of just like towering garbage and shit. And I was like, oh, my God, like. This is like one of those things that like you feel like you should call social services because I was like, this is not safe for a kid. It was wow. crazy. So whatever happened, you know, I have no idea. That was the only time I ever met her. It was a friend of a friend. Ugh. I have to say you filthy fucking pig. <laughs> but here's the thing. These guys aren't saving anything. They're just throwing their papers. Yeah. And, and cigarette packs on the floor. A lot of times. Oh, you Let mean me these guys. Let's see the picture. Let's see the truth. So look how he forgot what he was supposed to be doing, Vito does. You know, and then he's like, I got you dessert. Yeah, because you got us lunch. And dessert is part of the meal, Vito. It's, it's a major part of the meal. A meal without dessert is like being fucking stabbed in the throat, <laughs> but not the belly. It's the Do, same you got it? thing? No, I'm not. I'm having trouble sending or receiving texts. Well, you, you shouldn't send it. But I'm, I'm, I tried to send to see if I could. <laughs> could you see what if one of the other guys then could get it? Just have him run in the phone. I just sent it over. Oh, you have the picture? Yeah. Oh. Why do you send it to the idiot that can't get it, though? <laughs> I send it to both of you. You call me the idiot? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, just don't say you have the picture. Just, I just did. You guys, all right, come it's on. It's ugly now. We're all turning on each other. Come on, guys. I don't want to see this. This is only my third day back. This is, should be a celebration that continues Why is all week. so bad? All right. Just so you know, take a look at that. That's the fucking office I walked into. Hold on. Can I just preface this with yeah. the fact yeah. that Chris also said, we already started cleaning. <laughs> so this means this is cleaner yeah, that, than yeah, it that was is. earlier That's today, which is really scary. Slightly. 
Look at the amount of shit that's on the floor. That's your biggest problem. Yeah. You've got things that belong in the trash can <laughs> that you have on the floor. Oh, boy. Stuff just packed up on the heater. I I'm going to send that's this over. Fire into, I know. <laughs> it is a fire hazard. Uh, I'm sending this to the New York Fire Department. Oh. <laughs> Um, no, we're going to put this up. There's nothing in there that you don't want up on the gram, right? Let me see. Yeah, I'm not going to give you mine. Oh, Vito, you ended up getting yours with, again, right? What is it? You're showing me something? Yeah. What is it? I'll, I'll just write you a note. <laughs> Jesus, I can't see. Is it someone's dick? <laughs> <laughs> we have seven pieces. <laughs> <flying all> over. <laughs> <laughs> There's flashlights what? everywhere, and they're <laughs> used to. And no one gives a fuck <laughs> yeah, okay, about. Okay. Here, look, look, give it back to me. Oh, okay. This is what. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Did, did we have one of those? <laughs> yes, it's been in there for years. I didn't know that. <laughs> Holy shit! I'm telling you, you guys are a fucking train wreck. <laughs> I know you're not familiar with the show F Troop, but that's what you are. I'll have to watch that. Hi. Hi, baby. She's drifty, huh? Yeah, she's so close. Should I throw the fireworks now or later? No, don't ever. <laughs> hey, check her, too. I gave her a bunch of pop rocks. What? <laughs> <laughs> She's not had any food, let alone food that explodes. I just poured it straight into her mouth. She seemed like she was enjoying it. <laughs> you know what they say about pop rocks and breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's already posted up on the Instagram. Just, uh, I hope you put it up as the filthy office of. And Earl, I expect more out of you. You're a very clean teen. Yeah, I can't try to keep my teen. teen. I have to keep my area, my area pretty clean. No, I it should be the area. Here. It's got to be the entire thing. Okay. I'm sure your area is nice, but you're sitting between the Filth Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the Filth Brothers Towing Company. I'm just noticing the amount of stacked up trucker hats on Chris's desk. I don't know how I've got all these trucker hats. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I know that. Chris has a fucking dingy, weird apartment because I've seen it. When <laughs> I seen him three o'clock in the morning on Periscope, just fucking sitting there one night. He was eating a whole case of fucking White Castles, and his the the fucking just stains on his walls and the sadness of it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like oh, a fun party has taken place there, right? The fucking it, it looked like. The rundown of lost opportunities and disappointments. <laughs> yeah, and also like the 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 blinds in my kitchen were all oh, there's holes in them. Yeah, so that's that, not good for blinds. No, no, it's that's the opposite of what you're looking for. Here's what it looks like. Yeah, he is right. I mean, that that means the blind ain't working. But it looked like this is the honeymooners <laughs> starring Chris Stanley as someone who was in his worst shape, the Jackie Gleason, <laughs> and starring his wife, also Chris Stanley, with a weird, scary wig on her head. And with a fridge older than the one in the fucking honeymooners. Yeah, and smaller. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking, the one in the honeymooners, you can have like a, uh, one thing of milk. That's all they had in there. I hate, I like, the look of a small fridge. It grossed me out. Yeah. I didn't realize, like, I had a smaller fridge, so it's going like, other kids' apartments or whatever. And just like, wow, this is fucking amazing. I felt less than, man. <laughs> yeah, you are less than yeah, everybody I, else. I, I, yeah, how less... small is this fridge? It's really It's small. like a mini fridge? It's slightly bigger than a mini fridge. <laughs> it looks like it would be the fridge of the Slender Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Of slashing stuff. What do you want to add, Earl? Breaking news. Uh oh. Uh, Jeff Sessions has resigned Ooh, as Attorney wow. General. The new season it starts now. <laughs> <laughs> I literally said last night, well, tomorrow we'll start our new season. 
You're not going to hear about the Mexicans walking here anymore. Yeah. You know, totally. That storyline is done. Yeah. Now, what does uh, Jeff Sessions do next? This always surprises me. You're a fucking senator. Uh, and then you quit to get a job like this that you can't even keep. Like we've had before. There's always a governor. Uh, if there's a Democrat, a governor of, of New Jersey will quit being governor after everybody elected that person. And they go on and be on a cabinet for the next 15 months tops. Yeah. Why is that a better job? Yeah, I don't know why. It, I mean, like, what do you do? Like, it's not like it's resume building. Yeah, I mean, if you're already a senator, what are you going to... I'm sorry, you're only a senator. We were looking for somebody with attorney general skills. <laughs> <laughs> I never got that. It seems ridiculous to me. All right, Chris Stanley, we got stuff to give out, right? Yes, we do. We have <clears throat> tickets to give away to Ricky Gervais and friends. All right, before we do this, 844 Rock God. 844 Rock God. Can you read it or do I have to? I can read it. Okay. 844 Rock God. We've got uh, seven pair, seven pair. So call in and we'll take uh, you off the air. Now do the legal read. We have seven pair of tickets to give away to Ricky Gervais and Friends, a work in progress with Ron Bennington and Jim Norton. It's happening at the K Playhouse at Hunter College on November 8th at 7 p.m. If you can be in New York City Thursday, November 8th, no purchase necessary to enter or win. Must be a U.S. resident to win at least 18. It's Ricky Gervais and Friends, a work in progress. Reread that because I don't think you got that right. Okay. We have, read it with like compassion. Okay. We have seven pairs of tickets to give away. No, not angry. Oh, that's angry? Mm -hmm. right. The okay. volume was fine okay. the first time. Okay. <laughs> we have seven pairs of tickets to give away to Ricky Gervais and Friends, a work in progress. With Ron Bennington and Jim Norton. It's happening at the K Playhouse at Hunter College on November 8th at 7 p.m. If you can be in New York City Thursday, November 8th, no purchase necessary to enter or win. Must be a U.S. resident to win at least 18. And we'll take you off the air. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. Call and win these tickets. And I was just talking to uh, uh, Ricky about this today. Because I find it really odd how he puts together this show. And, um, and Seinfeld just thinks it's madness. Madness. Really? Yeah. Here's something that's funny. Because Ricky plays little songs and runs commercials and, you know, you have time to go pee. Both of them, um, and I was the only one that stayed. They both left at different times. They both tried to get me on each other's sides. Or something, a point they were making against the other person. <laughs> and I agreed both times. <laughs> <laughs> very, very odd. Very, very strange world we live in today. Uh, Earl, for you, this would be like you being with uh, Corey Glover and then another guy in the same band. Vernon. Okay, Vernon Reed. I can't remember everybody in every. How many bands do you think you can name everybody in the band? Oh my God, very I've gotten worse with that. When little. I was younger, I felt like I would have nailed it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm really bad with that. What was the late, the last band you could have named everybody? Green Day. Um. Yeah, or maybe the Strokes. White stripes. One... White stripes is cheating. <laughs> That's not fair. That's like saying you can bring up Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> Oh, God, that's a cute kid. She's pretty cute. Yeah. Earl, if you ever decide you want to get out of this business and full-time become a breakfast helper, we'd love to have you in the big house. We love you. We Break consider you part of the family. <laughs> the big house. We're never going to let you run away from us. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I was saying when I said it, like it's being rude to the people who went through that? I, I Yeah, I do. Understand. And I hear people saying that shit all the time. Yeah. You know? Well, you know what? Um, sometimes you'll hear that with people with um, victims of rape or sexual assault. Like Everybody I would have just it. like get, kicked him in the dick and get got that. out of there. First of all, let me just point this out to a man who... Used to be in fights when I was younger. Kicking someone in the dick is such a long shot. To kick them yeah. in the balls and have it hit the right spot. Everyone thinks that a kick in the balls 
fucking ends the fight. But guys are constantly trying to fucking knee or kick each other in the balls, and it might be a glance. And now you got this fucker like, what? Trying to kick my fucking balls? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's furious. It's an adrenaline rush. Wow, I might turn you on, rapist. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> no, you sound like you're a rapist. No, when though. you get hit, you know, when it you makes get, you want to rape more. No, I got it. Doesn't it. make you rape more, but if you get it hit, out and, the Scots Irish. You know. know. <laughs> the Scots. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, people do assume that it's a, an easy target, and I think people like underestimate being able to punch someone too. Like you're, you don't want someone to be like, just punch him in the face, or you know what I mean? Like, why didn't you hit him in the face? I don't think those are people who've ever been in a, a physical <laughs> fight because, like, most fights are pretty. I mean, maybe it's because I'm a girl, so I've yeah. only been in a girl fight, but they're just wild. It's like a lot of flailing. Yeah, but even a punch, right, doesn't lead to a knockout all the time. Like, and it's not clean. Like, I think no. people think, like, you just, it's like fist meets face, and then it's like either they're. Like over, like no, no it's like it slides off. Normally, and it's yeah. just like and, and if you really nail somebody, you'll probably break your wrist and or hand. Here's what I'm always saying. This is the defense thing um, that I'll teach people. And you, you got to you see the stance that I'm in right now, mm. where the left foot is for, and then it's pulled and shoot, <laughs> pull the trigger, shoot. <laughs> That's good. And then that'll end the good. fight. And sometimes I won't even shoot right away. I'll go, suck on this, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you want to rape me? <laughs> suck on the end of this fucking gun. And the cum is going to be the bullets. The bullets will come down your throat. <laughs> and then I'll come some bullet blood on your fucking tits. <laughs> That's what I'll do. Or sometimes I'll just go like this. I didn't just bring a knife to a gunfight. I brought two knives to a gunfight. Knifey, <laughs> knifey. I'll do something like that. I okay, the next time you see me, use the name knifey. Or I'll go like this. Why don't you come over here? Step right through this bear trap. Because I'll leave a bear just, trap out. Just told me what it is. Yeah, but I'm going to push you into it now. <laughs> I go, you feel like swimming? Because I got a pool full of bear traps right now. I'm not going in there. Dive in. The bear traps are warm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Maybe you can't bear the pain of my bear trap. I don't really like rap music, but I like trap music. Bear trap music. Or is this more traps than you can bear? And that's the only way to really win a fight. There's only going to be two hits in this fight. Me hitting you and you hitting the bear trap. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying, Earl. Strong defense, Ronnie. What's that? It's a strong defense, Ronnie. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> After all the years you mocked me, nice to see you finally coming around. Earl, I feel like I've found a perfect date for you. Ooh. Perfect date for me? Mm-hmm. Who, who is this? Well, she's a black woman <laughs> from my neighborhood. <laughs> And she's elderly. <laughs> now, last night, um, I'm walking home. Remember it was raining? Yeah. Well, it knocked a bunch of the leaves down. The leaves are on the sidewalk, and they're so fucking slick. It's like ice, right? And uh, over on the Upper East Side, a black woman <laughs> fell down. And me and another guy were helping her get up. But she was so freaked out about going down 
It was like she was never going to ever be able to walk again. <laughs> like she was over thinking about how bad it was to be on the ground. Well, when you fall as an adult, you lose all confidence in your yeah. body. You're like, is this possible? <laughs> So at any time I could just fall? That's how she was. Why are you giving me the thumbs up? For what? The tickets. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the tickets are given away, of course. He loves women falling down. That's his real thing. Yeah, I was like, what is he saying? Yeah. We got the uh, video of you helping the women up. <laughs> but, so she went down and was like, oh my God. So a guy was helping her, and I came over to help too. But I had a cigar in my left hand. I wasn't going to put my cigar down, you know, because it was fucking wet out. So I was helping her up with one hand, but she was having trouble. She was like, ah, ah, and I'm like, easy. You're not as fucking damaged. You know, you're not in a bear trap right now. This is just you on the sidewalk. You're fine. And we got her up. And then she went like this. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, like, that's sweet. I go, I work with a guy who would be perfect to go out with you. <laughs> and she goes, why? I go, he's black <laughs> and he's nice. And you are nice, Earl. I guess you would have that in common. Do you and ever fall? <laughs> there was two things in common. <laughs> it's true. Two things. But she was like, Earl, I thought you would like her because she was what you would call a church lady. She seemed like a church lady. You're religious, so there's that. I, well, I, you know, I, I, I was with Gervais. Spiritual. He's sure there's no God, hundred percent. Yeah, he's a um, he's an atheist. And we'll <laughs> we'll fight you for it. He says people that think like you are stupid, or all. well, he's he's got an opinion. He's entitled. Would you pray the worst happens to him? <laughs> no. Is that how your faith works? <laughs> <laughs> Does it do, do, do you find it offensive though when people say it or is it like it's not a big deal? Not a big deal to me at all. I mean, I've heard that, this that's before. just the way Muslims are happier around Christians or Jews than they are atheists. They well, think at, at least, least you have something. They're trying. You know, the, the Muslims are like, at least you're trying. You're wrong, but you're trying to but an atheist, they do not like. At work, uh we have we have Muslims at work, and when someone mentions that they're an atheist, they get up and leave. They don't even want to be in the same room. I've never seen that. That's before. prejudiced. Yeah. No, it's like, well, we can't have this conversation. And boom. Why? Oh, like, and I'm like, why not? You know, why can't we have the conversation? And not to nitpick, but I feel like that's like throwing it out. Like this is not up for a conversation. It's like, well, then there's nothing to learn. You have all the you have all the answers with just your religion. Yeah, I'm I'm wide open about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like I'm I'm always open to listen. I uh, went to you know how there's like a Christian school and all. Yeah, I went to atheist school when I was a kid. They shut the blinds and all the doors. Mm -hmm. They turn off the lights and they go, "This is it. This is your whole <laughs> eternity." And why did you still flunk the test? <laughs> I forgot what it was, and I just wrote in there. Kool-Aid heaven? Because <laughs> I thought there was such a thing as Kool-Aid heaven. <laughs> Earl, what do you think heaven's going to be like? No white people? <laughs> I think there'll be white people there. Okay. Well, you I tell me what it is. Just just whatever, I always thought heaven was a state of mind. You know? So you're not like a golden streets kind of guy. We're not going to see each other on the other side. We'll just feel bliss. I think it was... I When I had that... When I had the ulcer episode... All those years ago, that's a sore stomach. <laughs> but no, it was. I, I was I ready. Think to, he was talking about oh, your life. But, I, in terms I, but of I was ready like, to. I was ready to go. I was ready. That's to, not true. And I felt. One time I burped so hard I couldn't believe it. Didn't is, mean I was near death. It's heartburn. <laughs> right. It was agita. No, it was what you had. I needed three blood transfusions. For agita? No, bleeding ulcer. It's a bad wow. doctor you went to. <laughs> But I remember just feeling very, uh, very peaceful. In the other room. Aww. And Chris's filth room. No, no. Get her out of there. So what do you think heaven is like? It's You don't see anything, right? Uh, I think it's just whatever you think that perfect place will be. Well, that would be the set of Dobie Gillis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, a Dobie Gillis reference. 
with that thinking man there and everybody hanging out together, <laughs> with beatniks. I don't know if Maynard Krebs will be there. Was Maynard J. Krebs. Maynard J. Krebs. Oh, yeah, you're right. J. Krebs. I can't remember. I, I just remember it was Bob Denver. But, That's um, right. The great Bob Denver. You think he'll be, he went to heaven? <laughs> I hope so. He was kind of cool. <laughs> So you think it just looks like whatever your your special place is? Is that what you're saying? I mean, that's just my imagination going crazy. Just What's it like, say in the Bible, though? Um, basically, you know, you know, mansions, you know, out room, places of many mansions, and so it's Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking like unique mansions or these like Mick mansions? Like everyone has the same one? Because I don't like those. that. I fucking hate those, Earl. That's classless. You know what you mean? Mean? I'm not a big house guy anyway. I like I like a modest place. But you like to be in a dog house. <laughs> Just give me a dog house with a little <laughs> hole in the side. Just please send me to dog heaven so I don't have to be around people. I'll crawl in backwards and put my uh, face right in my dog dish. <laughs> <laughs> like Snoopy? <laughs> Snoopy? What do you mean by that? Snoopy always had his, you know, he loved his doghouse. <laughs> Could be any dog. Did you ever have a real dog girl? No, never had a dog. Afraid of him? Dogs hate me. I don't know why. Well, they got to know you. <laughs> do you ever worry that when dogs get wet, they smell like white people? <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, hey, is that true? No. By the way, do we smell like wet dog? Yeah, we do. Be honest, or I'll, I'm serious. Tell us never, the truth. I never took time to smell a white dog because they always snapped at me. No, not a white dog. dog. White person. No, I said a, white, I said, I'm never, a wet dog. I'm sorry. Uh, like, uh, I'll just say this, and a lot of the NBC ladies, I noticed they're so, all starting to smell a little spicy. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's going on at lunch, but there's some... <laughs> Spiciness coming through their pores. <laughs> there must be a place that they're I said all going. This woman, I go, where did you have lunch today? And she told me, I go, next time go somewhere else <laughs> because your body stanks like it. I had to come in here earlier today. My life was so much better. Yeah. I just walked in. There's not a fucking thing down there. I Groups can, of people. It's ridiculous the time now. Yeah. It's, I, this, it's is, lunch crowd. <clears throat> this is new for me coming in at this time. And it's crazy. Like the elevators yeah. are just packed. Every single one. Three packed to six would have been perfect for us. Packed with a hot lunch. They all love it. What do you mean? Well, they just love taking their their, their lunch. Filthy. Yeah. People that bring their fucking lunch back to their desk are, are filthy, <laughs> fucking disgusting. <laughs> I don't want to say cotton, so I'll just say <laughs> ham bone. Ugh. The stank of it. And you can get the stank on the 37th floor, well, too. Yeah, 37th floor smells downright soupy. It smells like soup up yes. there, like old soup. Like nut soup. Like somebody said, Grandma, bring Grandpa in here, put his nuts in this fucking hot water, and then we'll eat it tonight. <laughs> Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safe for today. Over a million people use the amazing Ring video doorbell. To help protect their homes. Ring knows home security begins at the front door, but doesn't end there. So now they're extending that same level of security to the rest of your home with the Ring floodlight cam. Just like Ring's amazing doorbell floodlight cam is a motion-activated camera and floodlight that connects right to your phone with HD video, two-way audio that lets you know the moment anyone steps on your property. See and speak to visitors. Even set off an alarm right from your phone with Ring's floodlight cam. When things go bump in the night, you'll immediately know what it is. Whether you're home or away, the Ring floodlight cam lets you keep an eye on your home from anywhere. Ring floodlight offers the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. With Ring, you're always home. Save up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit when you go to ring.com slash comedy. Ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. Let's do it. Put on your headphones. Vito's got the news. Let's do it. To the gossip they're saying on the radio (laughs) 
This week's Dish segment is presented by Dish. Get extra action with NFL Red Zone from NFL Network on Dish at no extra charge. Dish tuned in to you. To learn more, call 1-844-CALL-DISH or go to dish.com. And today, we have a special Dish guest. It's Kashmir! Yeah! Oh my god! Oh, so good to see you again. I know you were you were celebrating your birthday home last time I was here. I yes, that's true. Oh. Yeah. I was. Well, look how far we've all come. I know. <laughs> I know. Things are so different. What's what that about? Cool, <laughs> still got the boots. Yeah, still got the boots. But what a cool shirt he's wearing. I know. I he's know. always looking good. Uh, uh, Chris, yes. what was the shirt that you were wearing? Where did you wear? Oh, Halloween, Halloween or whatever? Halloween, the pineapple. Uh, Hawaiian you, shirt. Can you show that to him and see if this should be your new look? Because I can't stand him in his dad look. No. <laughs> he's not a dad. No. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I've I think he could go I'm, big, fun, loud yeah, shirt I'm guy. I'm a fan of pineapple, too. Yeah. Who isn't? I mean... <laughs> Who isn't? It's part pine, it. part apple. <laughs> and this Sunday at 8 p.m., Cashmere will be hosting a show, Jersey Poor, at Branded in Brooklyn. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh, what's that yeah. all about, Jersey Poor? It's going to be... It's still... I still feel the need to give advice to people. So um, it's some uh, stand-up comics, some you all may know. Dan Perlman. Love. Then, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm excited to see him. And then I'm going to be... Giving some advice for people going home to the holidays. So uh, Dan is going to be doing a little stand-up, and then you'll give him some advice, too. I mean, I feel like I do need to give him some advice. Uh, Show off the point. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, Oh, that's nice, right? That's what I I said. This is the best he's looked in a long time. Why don't you wear more of those? I don't have any of those. You only need one loud colors yeah, and you yeah. need bold prints. Zara right on Fifth Avenue. They got yeah. so many. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Shopping. Yeah. <laughs> you want us to take you for a, a makeover? But you have to burn those dad shirts. Not yeah. burn the dad There's shirts. There's a it's terrible on yeah. I've, I've never liked him in the dad shirt. But you get to trade a dad shirt yeah. for a fun shirt. A dad shirt for a glad Ooh. shirt. Mm. <laughs> because he'll be going to the Glad Awards after yes. that. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get this dish started. All right, my first dish, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. It's about uh, Rebel Wilson. You know who Rebel Wilson is. Ooh, Ooh cool. no, quite a dish. No, well, yeah. she was in Pitch Perfect and Bridesmaids. <laughs> Ooh, you know her. <laughs> what a, why is it taking so long to get to the and gossip? Reb, and Rebel Wilson had to apologize because she claimed she was the first plus size rom com star. Oh no, that was Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> <laughs> Dan. Oh. Oh. Um, um, meanwhile, Gwyneth Paltrow was like, I actually wore a fat suit and shell how I was really brave. So I feel like that counts. She gooped it up for me. Yeah, she was. But uh, I know everybody hates Gwyneth, but I could watch that fucking movie and over and over because it goes to show you once you're hypnotized, you can see <laughs> what's underneath the fat. <laughs> I went on a, um, a high school date to that movie. It was very sp- really. I like, always remember that. I wonder if he thought to himself, "God, it's like I'm in the movie." No second, no second date. Fucked. <laughs> this movie looks so like weird too, because it kind of just feels like I feel pretty. Oh, the whole, really? The whole premise is that she's walking, yeah. falls, hits her head, and then like her life is magical. Wow, that like, is yeah. literally it's the same thing. Yeah, there were a lot of people that were mad at, at, at I feel pretty because yeah. they thought that she wasn't fat enough. <laughs> That's what, it's like if she you look at all, yeah, weight all the, the people role. who like reviewed Trainwreck, like she's too fat to be in a movie. Then literally three years later, like she's not fat enough. Yeah, well, she's, Rebel's changing that narrative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rebel with a cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this thing, this movie opens up with her uh, just drinking gravy straight out of a bowl. <laughs> it's a Thanksgiving classic. Who's it's in so it with brave. her? Uh, I don't know who's in it. Oh, Do you know Chris Hemsworth is her oh, love interest? Yeah, I've, that yeah. would never happen. <laughs> she's too big. You mean it's a fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just a reality show on A&E. Yeah. Really happy for her. Wow. I well, know. That's a good gamble. Yeah. Monique was pissed at her because Monique's been doing rom-coms. Right. Well, that was the, the issue with it is it was kind of Queen Latifah and Monique both were like, hey, we starred in rom-com. We then met she, white. So then she comes back with the like, yeah, but that's different. And everyone was Ooh, like, that's why that's everyone worse. was upset. Yeah. Was like really pissed off about that okay. remark is yeah. that she kind of marginalized them jumping in and going, hey, we've she done this. Deeper and deeper, yeah. <laughs> Earl, do you have a fam- uh, famous uh, black rom-com? Do you get one that you love? Uh, it goes back a long time. Claudine. 
I don't even know that. I don't know that I either. Uh, yeah. Diane Carroll, James Earl Jones. She James played, Earl Jones. She plays a single mother of six, and she falls for a garbage man played by James Earl Jones. Is this I a documentary? Or? No. I know Wait, into a it. heart and soul comedy. Yeah. Can you dig <laughs> it? I yeah, love I can it. dig it. I love that. Right. Yeah, these, uh, uh, what year was this, Earl? Uh, 70, I think, four. Um, wow. Gladys Knight and the Pips do the soundtrack, and Curtis Mayfield did the music. Oh. And you know these uh, movies. <laughs> It's also interesting, like, Revel hasn't been able to do a press tour in the past few years without getting something happen yeah. to her, because, like, before when she lied, like, she made herself, like, 12 years younger than she really is. She's got I liked her better when she, she was, was younger. 22. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's funny, too. Everyone was noticing in the trailer, her age is 28. Like, her character. Well, like, it is true that fat don't crack. <laughs> I love her, though. I always think she's great and everything. Yeah. She's so funny. So good for her. <laughs> Next dish. Oh, boy. Rihanna sent Trump a cease and desist mm. because he was using her music at rallies. Everybody does that. Republicans yet, are not allowed to listen to any music. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, they should play country music because that's who's there. Yeah, that And those people sense. would go crazy. They're not going to like a Rihanna song. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why they try. That's like a mutual, well, yeah. Did Rihanna only make Umbrella, or did she make anything else? Uh, was there ever got, another oh. one? Shine bright like a diamond. Ooh, yeah. And then wark, 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 wark. She has, yeah. Like <laughs> which one did they use here? Don't Stop the Music, which is please don't stop the music, music, music. Oh, well. We can just record it and send it to him. To yeah, here's our version. Here I like you how go, you Trumpy. said. Did she do any other songs? And the three of us are like, and go <laughs> in canon. Yeah. Did you know any you other ones? Costumes? Chris? No, not me. Either. I just knew Umbrella. Then I thought she died for a while. <laughs> I think she's releasing a reggae album next. Like she wants. Oh, well, that's where reggae. she's from, right? Bar yeah, Barbados. She's, or Barbados. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought she was Trinidadian for some reason. No, that's uh, Jen. Oh, I get those two mixed <laughs> yeah. up. Same tattoos. That's and probably Rihanna, why. <laughs> Rihanna's recently gained weight. Now everybody calls her Thick Rihanna. Yeah. yeah. That's Be mean. No, she no likes it's positive. It. Yeah. It's thick with two C's. Yeah, yeah. The two C's make it. She's, yeah. she's That's two flaunting. vaginas. <laughs> she's spelled thick right. <laughs> oh, my God. Thick. He's spelled thick oh, wrong. Man. Yeah, go to that. Go to that. No, he's yeah. not part of the culture. <laughs> That's It's a culture, not a costume. Well, she is big now. Yeah. But Look at the thighs. But in a great good. way. Looking. You're lying. So really good. You're lying, Vito, if no. you act like you like that more. I like Thick Rihanna way more. I also love Look, she's, not Rihanna. Yeah, because she always leaves a <laughs> go to that restaurant with her wine glass, too. No, the, go to the left. That one is. Mm. Now, you see this. He's trying to be political correct uh, generation. Yeah. No, I just she I like. Thick I think Rihanna. she looks better that I way. I like yeah. Rihanna better. I'm not. I've never been into like skinny because before she looked neck like tattoos pop, are yeah. stretched out. <laughs> 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 now how come everyone acts like that's okay, but you all run down Amy Schumer when she gains a couple pounds? When, when do we do that? <laughs> I'm talking with the guys, not the user. I'm talking to fucking Vito. I've never. I, I mean, some mm. people like some people like small girls and some people like bigger girls. I've never. We I've, never heard you defend Amy Schumer when the fucking people start on. Am I right or wrong, Chris? He's never defended Amy. <laughs> wow. There you go. Well, I didn't believe you at first, but then when I heard Chris <laughs> back you up, Chris always speaks his mind. Yeah, he's Every, a truth bomb. Thank you, TB. <laughs> All right, let's go. Next dish is Matthew it seems McConaughey. Like you want to read and not even be involved. No, I'm with telling us. you guys, Matthew McConaughey uh, really wanted to be Jack in Titanic. <laughs> was convinced he had what? the role. Yeah, oh, like oh, he even auditioned Chris. with Kate Winslet. Wait, did you this Kate dish <laughs> is 21 years old, but it just <laughs> came you, out now. Did you hear that they uh, they released his audition? No. Yeah, it was awesome. It was like. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Love those icebergs. We get closer, they stay the same sex. There's a party right now in the making. Irish guys are getting drunk downstairs. <laughs> Want to paint you like one of my uh, French girls? Uh, he definitely thought 
that it was real. <laughs> you, you were 100. You lost Vito, and he goes like this. <laughs> he got a little mad, but he was a victim. You guys uh, got any lifeboats? Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> <laughs> now this has to happen. Yes. I mean, they are making a second one. That, that could actually sounds like yeah. a better movie. <laughs> like, yeah. Hello, <laughs> SNL. <laughs> Have we got a sketch for you? <laughs> sketch fix. Yeah. <laughs> He also said, uh, "Who's he?" Matthew McConaughey said he turned down uh, Guy Pierce's role in L.A. Confidential. He's just bragging. Yeah. He's like, "I could have anything." Also, with all these older roles, too. Like, what is I know. He doing this now? is all the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares what happened in ninety-seven? <laughs> but how to lose a guy in ten days? That mm. now that is his Titanic. <laughs> that, that's his Titanic. It's all about Titanics. <laughs> I'm the king of the world. <laughs> <laughs> There's some dating dish. Louis oh, C.K. Boy. is dating a French comedian slash. Actress. Her name is Blanche Garden or Gardine. <laughs> so she's French, so it's probably Gardine. Let's get a look at her. I kind of love now, her name. When I was talking to him down at the yeah, cellar, like, he said to me, My girlfriend's French. I've been going back there a lot, but I haven't. Uh, um, I never. He didn't bring who she was. Uh, she's she, familiar. She has a Netflix yeah. special. Yeah, but is it in French? <laughs> It's, it is in French. Yeah, because they do. There's a, like a Netflix special in every goddamn oh, really? thing, except for English. There's not one special in English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's cute. She's very cute. Yeah, she's very French. I mean, I guess that makes sense. But wow. Well, she's adorable. Yeah, all I like every single French girl <laughs> that there is. Uh, Louis also did 75 minutes last night in Paris. 75 minutes, first time you went up for a while like that. I wonder if Blanche opened. Blanche is like this. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to do my own stuff if you can't follow it. <laughs> they like a little of, uh, physical comedy. Yeah. Uh, have you say, uh, pussy? Uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, Shave. <laughs> he, uh, uh, I say Gad doing stuff down at the cellar all the time. And I got this perfect fucking thing to do, but I have to be the person who follows him. Save it. I'm yeah. saving it. <laughs> I've been saving it. I'll tell you guys off air because I don't want to give away his joke. <laughs> have I told you, Gail? Yeah, you told me. But he has 15 minutes on something that I could debunk in one second. <laughs> <laughs> There's a certain fact that he's missing. Look, Vito's just looking at the next thing, ready to go. Go, Vito. <clears throat> no, I was cough. <clears throat> Um, Christmas. Why do you cough on your fucking bare chest? <laughs> no, I'm, ca I'm covering it from you guys. Yes, but you're coughing down your fucking tits. <laughs> so gross. Nipples Chris are diseased. Oh, oh, Chris oh. fucked you up. Oh, gross. Chris, <laughs> Christmas from Big Brother uh, got arrested for raising some hell with her. Uh, Who's Christmas? Christmas was like the, really the broken, the broken leg. How many years ago? That was last summer, not this past one. Oh. But Wait, her, I love that name. Remember, she had the uh, she had the the scooter. Up. Yeah. Oh, wow. she's on a scooter. Uh, what she get arrested for? So her, she uh, has a baby daddy, and when she found out about the side chick, she showed up to a gym, started causing a scene, and rammed the side chick with her car. Her Damn. car, the side chick's car, with her car. Damn, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and she was eight months pregnant at the time. Look, oh my god! By the way, this Which took one? place in Tampa, and it was one of fifty-two things that took place at the gym. That day. <laughs> she, she got to be Florida woman. Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> she was eight months pregnant, and uh, the uh, officers didn't arrest her because she was so far along, and said you could just come turn yourself in in a few months after you have the kid. And that's, that's a new so level nice. of crazy to drive into a, someone while you're pregnant. Just yeah. be like, this is worth it. Yeah. In Florida, it's not <laughs> that crazy. <laughs> that's really, yeah. Did you see it's the different. guy whacked oh, out Christmas? last night? What he did? Yeah, I don't. I don't want to step on you if you got it. So he's all fucked up, and he goes, breaks into wherever, dives into the alligator pit. Mm -hmm. Alligator bites him. Right. Oh my god. Mm. And they have video of this. He gets out. Dives back into the alligator pit. <laughs> 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 Florida is so crazy. It's the cra craziest. Now that's him, right? Yeah, it's him. Yeah. He would be a normal I was guy. Gonna say he was, yeah. Except for the humidity drives people nuts. It does. Uh -huh. It I gets mean, right into the brain. I was gonna say, do it to me. It yeah. was a crocodile pit in an alligator farm <laughs> in St. <Saint> Augustine. <laughs> 
So Christmas, what I'm trying to say is there's somebody out there for <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. You don't need this guy. There's another guy. Leave him. Yeah, you got a, with a croc fucking attached to his ribs. And I think he'll be a good father to that baby. That's true. Mm. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. Oh my God. God. Just normal Florida shit. <laughs> He gets bit, and then he's like, I'm going back yeah. in. That was a blast. And you just always want to know, like, Look why did this start? But you just, he, there's not. Whoa, he whoa. missed the water at first, <laughs> by the way. He dove through a tree, it looked like, oh to get to the God. water. Oh. And look, you could just see. <laughs> there's a floating shoe. There's a floating shoe in there where his foot should be. <laughs> So Kevin Smith is planning his Thanksgiving, and because of the heart attack he had, it's going to be a vegan Thanksgiving. Oh, mm. oh my God. This is sad. That's a hell <laughs> That's, <laughs> a... <laughs> That's just sad. He can't enjoy food anymore. No, yeah. he can enjoy food. It's just vegan food. That's yes, important. that's not food. That's what we're saying. <laughs> that seems that more you... like, like a Debbie Downer answer. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, it's official. Yeah. I can't have children. <laughs> that, that was the best line ever. <laughs> and then, then she was cracking up while she said it. <laughs> Oh man, I should tell you guys this. story. So this is so crazy. So Halloween, uh, there's this big um, parade in Brooklyn, in a really really cute area of Brooklyn called Ditmas Park, mm -hmm. where um, there's just tons of really beautiful old homes. And so there's lots of kids. It's the first time I've ever done it. I thought you know I would take Juliet. So I had her in the carrier, and we're walking around. All the kids are dressed up. It's super cute. Somebody says, you've got to go around the corner because there's this massive house. They deck it out like crazy. And uh, I'm there with a couple people. We walk up to the house. It looks amazing. And uh, on the porch, we're looking at everyone. And I'm like, uh, guys, that's uh, that person handing out candy. That's that's Rachel Dratch in a witch hat. <laughs> and they're like, ha, ha, oh that God. does look like, oh, that is Rachel Dratch in a witch hat. Like, literally. So she has the big decorated. Yeah, yeah I, don't, so I don't know if it was her home, but it certainly yeah. seemed she just was like there. it. Because yeah. like, there was like a bunch of people on the porch. But she was standing front and center right by the door handing out candy in a witch hat. And everyone was just really excited. That's so cool. I know. And getting candy from a celebrity was just oh, I know. so much better than getting oh, yeah, it from a I normal that, person. Yeah, mine was Santa Claus for a celebrity <laughs> ever gave me some candy. <laughs> Tell me, I was really good, too. <laughs> you want to plug that, Chris? Is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah, we'd like to plug that. Uh, this Saturday at 2 p.m. at the Sierra and Sirius XM Studios, as part of the New York Comedy Festival, Ron is hosting the panel, That's Offensive. Can Comedy Survive the New Sensitivity? Featuring on the panel, Big J. Okerson, Ari Shafir, Lisa Traeger and Yamanika Saunders go to the Terrabang. I love all of those people. Terrabang.com for free tickets this Saturday, 2 p.m. Yeah. Do you think there's a new sensitivity to the audience? I feel um, I feel like there is a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah especially in a, a lot of the places I go, like in Brooklyn and things like that, people yeah. are very tight ropey. Yeah. Or they're almost just trying to be overly nice. They're just like, we love everybody. And yes. Like, that kind of gets claps now, which is weird. You're just like, everyone yeah. will just be like, Oh my God, like I'm happy for you. And everyone is like a standing <laughs> ovation. And I'm just like, what's going on? You go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> There's all throughout June, everyone just be like, well, happy pride. And like, it's just like, <laughs> and you're like, but that's not like, sure, that's a fact. But yeah. 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 <laughs> happy pride. We're standing up to those. Yes. <laughs> Sinead O'Connor fed oh. up with white people. As she said on Twitter. Me too. <laughs> oh my God, she's so right. She said she never wants to spend white people time with white people again and that they are disgusting. What is she hanging out in apple orchards? <laughs> <laughs> At Starbucks? That's a good one. <laughs> and she recently converted to Islam and her name oh. is Shuhada Davit. Well, let me just tell you about Sinead. What is her name? Sinead O'Connor. No one has done more with less than Sinead O'Connor. She had one fucking cover song in her life, like a bar act. Yeah. And here we are, fucking 30 years later, and what she says still makes yeah. the paper. It wasn't her song. I she still listen to it and cry. It yeah. was great, but that's it. A cover song. Yeah. I also like that she's kind of doing a Lindsay Lohan too with that. She's yeah. converting and just like, yeah. Just, yeah. Lindsay Lohan's living life. Ugh. Just right. She just had that fun dancing video where she was Ugh. dancing at a resort. And then she has like, a reality show. I'm, I'm excited for that. Wait, then she got punched for trying to steal that kid. 
Oh, yeah, she did she that still too. looks like a fucking <laughs> lunatic. She's not living her best. She's like, yeah. You're like, is she okay? <laughs> Remember that part of it when she was talking like this, <laughs> like she was from another? And she goes like this, don't fuck with Pakistan. <laughs> What's this fuck? I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're from Long Island, honey. <laughs> don't fuck with Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else living their best life right now is Scotty Pippen's ex-wife, Larsa Pippen. <laughs> this so, is a long way for us to get she, the gossip. She's single, <laughs> and she's just she's just been partying with Kendall Jenner, and she looks really hot. That's just We've never that. seen her before. Oh. Good for her. How does that work? What's going on with that? I was just, yeah. That's a I'm pretty like, popular thing, right? I keep seeing like girls wearing the, the weird thing between how? the breasts. Yeah, but what is that between the breasts there? Is well, there look, material That's what there? I was, I thought it looks like material for a second, but I'm like, I think that's skin. But what? also that but looks like Chris, plastic. So flat, and it looks like plastic over her face. Chris, <laughs> can I don't you know, zoom yeah. in just below the breast, please? Because there's like <laughs> either a material... Yeah. Oof. I, I think know. it's shadow. Or is I that don't a, think that's like a scar tissue. I was going to say scar tissue or like yeah. a really bad spray tan residue. No, I think yeah, it could be. It could, could be. be spray yeah, tan. that it could, could be that. Be, yeah. Or dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, her and Scotty have broken up and they're both just going out partying. She's been with Kendall Jenner a lot. Kendall it's Jenner. Actually, <laughs> no, no, just hanging well, out, partying. Kendall Jenner is dating Ben Simmons from the Philly 76ers. She is the Kardashian everyone thinks is bi gay, though. Kendall? Kendall? Kendall Jenner, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? Because she, she hasn't taken a... So. She's not, she hasn't had a baby. Uh, you know what? She's I was the gay one with about. acne. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a joke, and I thought, you know what? It's I, 2018. That's the kind of thing that's going to get me in trouble. And she... Well, <laughs> she's so pretty... But she's dating J.K. Simmons right now? <laughs> wow. Is that a shocker? I didn't see that one coming. I guess, you know, Oscar winner, right? She just likes conversations, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Comedy dishes. Jim Carrey and Ted Cruz had a little had a little what? feud over a uh, Jim Carrey painting. So he's one of his day. latest paintings was of Ted Cruz, and uh, Ted Cruz got bothered by it. It was of <sighs> Ted Cruz as a vampire. We're still having to see Ted Cruz. What is it? Ted Cruz is the winner. Like, he's the winner. Can't believe we don't get to shake that. Well, and I don't even I care about your politics. Like, let's just take that aside. You had those just two people, <laughs> two humans. And then you chose that guy. Like, just like on paper, everything. Like, like, like why do we have to keep dealing with well, this dude? He's funny. Like when he said to triumph the insult, Doug. Well, triumph. <laughs> it was the Democrats that had you spayed and neutered, not the Republicans. God, it was the most uncomfortable thing I ever so saw. So bad. Oh, couldn't oh. even be a person for a second. When you're just but like, he's the winner. Yeah. God love him. Well, he's Pete, this is the first time people are uh, turning on Beyonce at all. She got a lot of criticism on Twitter because she didn't endorse uh, Beto O'Rourke until the election day, and people were saying, "Why wouldn't you have kind of campaigned for this guy sooner? You left it to the last second." Yeah, but it's, it's up to her to like. She, I I don't think it's yeah. a a big deal that she did a day of. She also has an Instagram aesthetic to follow, and I mean, some things matter right. more than right. midterm right. elections. By I the mean, way, she, it is Beto, which yeah. I was like that was like was like a weird thing. Yeah. I thought it was Beto too. I, yeah, 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 Beto O'Rourke. Beto, yeah. Beto O'Rourke. I'm gonna start calling you Beto. Ooh, no, please don't. Beto. <laughs> okay. For his Beto. campaign run. But Beto. even on the camp like the coverage last night, everyone would be saying different ones like, wait, oh, actually it's this. And I'm like, this poor guy mm -hmm. is trying his best. <laughs> Just so nice, and no one even knows his name. I would have voted for him, but I couldn't I pronounce it. But it, was, it. It was just weird seeing people on Twitter mad at Beyonce because she never gets criticized on Twitter that much. Like, seeing what the Twitter nuts do. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't think there's anything. And she put out a very, like, a cute picture. Was she was, say, like, rocking her little Beto There was, like, shirt. video editing on it. She put in work, yeah. Her <laughs> and Taylor Swift really stepped up their other's <laughs> game for this. But then you think about it, you're like, if you're the kind of person who would vote for someone just because Beyonce mm -hmm. did, I feel like you'd be willing yeah. to do a day of. And also, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, I was go like, yeah. but it was like, I wish you would have said something earlier, Beyonce, but I made plans. For today. <laughs> is there, is there I'm a streaming lemonade? Yeah. Is there a celebrity that could get you to change your mind? Ooh. Wow. I think everybody has at least one. Chris, who's yours? Uh, I would say that, like, um, I would say an Alec Baldwin would change my mind. <laughs> mm, interesting. Since you and him vote the same way and punch people. Earl, who about for you? I would say Sean Penn. Sean Penn! Wow, that interesting. Dope? What do you got? I'd say Shaq. 
Shaq. <laughs> yeah, I was just, if Shaq said something, I'd be like, if he's getting involved in politics yeah. right now, he must have a point. Do you have one? Julia Roberts. Anything. Julia she, Roberts. she could tell me anything. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's actually true. Yeah. Vegan Thanksgiving. Yeah. I guess Miranda from Sex in the City, <laughs> Cynthia Nixon. You tell me what to do. Sorry, you couldn't be. Yeah. You're like you still tried. govern me. Yeah, she tried her best. <laughs> and mine is still J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kendall can introduce you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go down with Kendall. Yeah, they are such a cute couple. I mean, I kind of protect. Uh, I would say this, Kendall. This is Kendall. I think you two are going to get along great together. <laughs> Chris's political hero, uh, Alec Baldwin. That is. Oh, Damn it. Uh, he had his show move from its Sunday night time slot to Saturdays. It bumped in favor of reruns of Shark Tank because it was one of the lowest rated shows ABC's had, and it only had 1.5 million viewers last week. Did you, um, which still seems like a lot. To but me. not That's in, what I don't get about TV. Yeah. Yeah. In network so television, it's not in like cable television. 1.5 is okay. But network television, they're looking for more numbers. Well, what, what kind of, what are you looking for? <laughs> like for a Sunday night <laughs> time show, it's usually around, I'd say eight to 10 million. They're looking for 1.5. Uh, 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 tonight show doesn't get eight to 10 million. And it's a t talk show. This is just a fucking talk show that he's doing. But the prime time, it's Sunday night prime time. Yeah, well, but that's the insane thing. Yeah. That, it's not his fault. It's whoever gave him that. But I wa have you watched any at all? I haven't. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, Ricky's, of course, Ricky Gervais, my friend with Jerry Seinfeld, the three of us. <laughs> three best <laughs> we friends. We are the three amigos <laughs> and only two amigos. <laughs> um, they don't need the third <laughs> amigo. <laughs> but... Um, so uh, he had on uh, the dude after him. Mm -hmm. um, what's his name? Jeff Mr. Daniels. Bridges. Yeah. Jeff Bridges, not Jeff. Like, <laughs> look at Beatles face. Beatles face as he realized that he's Jeff Daniels. <laughs> but he literally <laughs> screamed at Jeff. Br Jeff Bridges is telling a story, and and Alec goes like this: "You work with your brother." And I'm like, "Holy shit! <laughs> I'm interested." Yeah, I know you got a question that you, you had to fucking change. Was it just like going over and over yeah, in his yeah. head until he gets like, "I gotta let it out." Here's something else: I hate. I hate an interview show where they just drop clips into it. Mm. So it was like, "Oh yeah, you did." There's just a clip that shows up, <laughs> you know, because the whole thing of an interview show is supposed to be like real life. Just yeah, it's got to be talking. conversation. Because yeah. I was like, I heard you went to Bermuda. And I'm like, <laughs> How? And you're like, because I have a video of you in Bermuda. <laughs> someone told me, and by someone, I mean the person who pre-interviewed you. <laughs> yeah, because it's always too much detail. Yeah. Like, why not just go, you had... Um, how was your flight here? Yeah. As opposed to, I heard something crazy happen to you on a flight with a man with one leg. And you're like, well, you've done a lot of work just now. Here's my favorite thing that they'll do in interview shows. Um, you were in the Beatles. Talk about it. <laughs> they literally will say to people, talk about it. And it happens all the time on cable news. That like, guy. Demi Lovato. Oh, out, of, boy. out of rehab. Uh, <laughs> broke social media silence to go vote and she might have a new boyfriend who is a a fashion icon and a fashion guru not an icon is it Pete? <laughs> guru to no it's icon. not Pete it's not Pete Davidson oh ooh, but um, and uh, she's living half she's live. she's splitting time between a halfway house and her home in LA she's doing good then yeah she's doing good <laughs> she's, doing she's got great. a sober boyfriend who she met in rehab she mm. left that old Lovato behind yes. that's the worst thing is you that, do, is that bad way. yeah yeah don't they actually tell you that not, like yeah. you can't do that you should not because you're deflecting right. and one of you could pull the other one down and you know you're still in the pink cloud like yeah man we're <laughs> sober we're doing great right is that a joint <laughs> <laughs> Well, but I know for a fact she's playing time in between her halfway house and a quarter way house. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was she in for? Everything? Uh, she, yeah, she had the overdose. Uh, she OD'd on fentanyl. Yeah, yeah. which yeah, was, Mac Miller, they just did his um, yeah. autopsy. He met, overdosed on cocaine, split with uh, fentanyl. We called it a speedball in the old days. And that's what was rough because she was... Oh, on and off sober for like five years in between yeah. both of that, yeah. 
That's the problem. It's like, it, it's really hard to not. The only way to understand is if you've ever been on, you know, like a diet, how long did you stay on it? And what happened the second you went off that diet? Right. You know, you go, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. I know I got to lose weight, but I'm going to eat for a yeah. while. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I could and that's show, what you do with the fentanyls. If I could show you a picture of myself from a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Were you big then? No, I mean, I lost all the weight, then went off the diet, and then <laughs> and then I overdosed on food. You need a halfway house. <laughs> you just, yeah, I could I cut all your food in half? You should just date Demi Lovato. Apple. It's oh easy. Oh, my God. Uh, no, she doesn't need well, any other like addictive true. personality. Yeah. Yeah. She's leaving the old Demi <laughs> behind. True. And she had the food addiction, too, right? Yeah. She was one oh, of those yeah. yeah, she had the body yeah. issues. She, Why not? And I don't... I hope this is the right answer. Just cut yourself. <laughs> <laughs> she did that too. She did it. Yeah. What and was wait? What was her body issues? Was it the poot Lovato meme? No, that, was, poot that was Lovato. She should just own that. That was so funny. Chris, Dude, look up poot Lovato. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. I fucking love poot Lovato, <laughs> and I almost exclusively call her poot. <laughs> What if that's just, she's like, I'm no longer Demi Lovato. She's just, yeah. So there was a really <laughs> awful picture of her. It's only funny because she's a really beautiful yeah, girl. Just... Someone took a picture of her way too close. And it kind of like, because of the way she's wearing her hair, she looked bald. And so they called this like other, like as though it was like a weird twin of hers, Poot Lovato. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's really nice to people. <laughs> oh, Poot. Good old Poot Lovato. Poot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mac Miller, who we just mentioned, you know, was dating. Uh, we didn't mention you him. Mentioned him. <laughs> no, we all mentioned him together. Hey, Eric wants to help you with something. He said somebody's stealing your bet. Eric, go ahead, buddy. Spy alert. Spy alert. Okay. I was just listening to Hannity's opening and in Vito's opening where he said, I'm so fucking proud of you guys. It definitely sounded like Hannity. Use that in his opening. Of well, course, it bleeps. Yeah, that was um, but I'm that something the guy said last night. Yeah. That's all. Beto. It's a Beto. It was a, be a, be a Beto that, quote from Beto. Yeah. Isn't that pronounced Beto? <laughs> Damn it. I don't know. I'm just going to call him Poot. A <laughs> That's who I wrote in. Yeah. Money Poot. <laughs> How long ago did that poot thing happen? <laughs> two like, years yeah, ago. two years yeah. ago. And it's never and it's still it. fresh Chris, never heard about it. I've it's never heard of poot Lovato. Oh, it's me neither. Funny, I just feel like we're out. <laughs> we're the last ones in. <laughs> it's still good, though. <laughs> So Pete uh, Pete Davidson it's Ariana Grande. Poot. No. <laughs> Poot Davidson. <laughs> we just dove on that Poot joke so hard. So uh Poot Davidson <laughs> and uh Ariana Grande, as you know, they broke up. And um so before SNL, thirty minutes before the episode goes live, uh Ariana Grande releases her oh, brand new song called Thank, Thank You Next. Next. It's yeah. all I've listened to since. Which she is good? Oh, it's really good. I listened to it this morning. Yeah. People are saying it's like her best song ever, and it's what every artist who's tried to do a breakup song should have done. Yeah. What's it about? Does she say Pete? Yes. Yeah. She yeah. actually she says his name. every single ex that she has, yeah. And it's about <laughs> no. what she's learned from it. I thought about that, too. I was like, that's cool, but my song would be way too long. <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be filled with yeah. made-up names. Yeah. There's just the four <laughs> seasons. It's Vivaldi. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, well, J-Lo, <laughs> I hope j Lo's with you now. <laughs> hey, J-J. Right, let me hear a little bit of this song. So hurtful that you don't get your own breakup song. It's just <laughs> next. Just end. Like, you're yeah. in, oh, congratulations. You're probably 13th on the way to It's a bummer 30. breakup song, yeah. Yeah. Hey, she loves yeah. it. Yeah, thank you, Ned. She did a First Wives Club inspired uh, performance of it on Ellen. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's apparently her favorite movie. Which now, is... <laughs> here's the thing though did, how, isn't she too young to be Cher? You know what I mean? Like, mm. this is, should be like a, an older woman's song. How old is, is she? She, tw she was older than Pete. Yes, yeah. she was 25. Wow, she looks 10. <laughs> she does yeah. look like a little You could be older her right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay, Yay, pop, pop. <laughs> and she's uh, doing this to release a new album by the end of the year because she uh. says, "F the industry, 
I'm going to drop music when I want to drop music. Good for her. <laughs> Mazel tov, Ariana. And yeah. Pete, Pete liked the song so much that uh, he was actually going to do a sketch about her on SNL, then cut it, and then ad-libbed a small thing he said about her on Weekend Update. Oh, oh, I don't even understand what that means, that he liked the song so because much. Because it's like really actually kind of respectful. Like he's, She says something like, I learned from you, but mm -hmm. I'm not. So but, instead of like making it messy, then he felt bad. He like decided, kind of a, I'm not going to do a mean sketch about yeah. the... Because she already got upset earlier in the week that yeah. he did that promo oh, where yeah. he proposed to the musical next, guest. Next, that was such a next, good yeah. next. <laughs> What was with that musical guest, too? Everybody freaked out about how yeah. off-key she was. I didn't watch it. She was, yeah, yeah she's interesting. Yeah, and everyone, it's so funny, nice everyone's saying she's yeah. doing what uh, Jackson Maine from A Star Is Born wanted Allie from the movie to do with SNL. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, that, made, that made me lose, they lost me in the movie when that happened. Oh, right, that was, uh... I, here's what I think. He loved her. I don't know if she loved him. Opportunity, I yeah. I don't know if she loved him, right? Right. She's having so much fun today. Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's still mad. <laughs> Pamela Anderson says uh, she's not a fan of the. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not here. She just this said she's. Juju. Down. No, yeah. I'm talking about Pamela Anderson. She says she's you not. Said a Pamela. <laughs> Pamela Anderson <laughs> said she's not a fan of the Me Too movement. She uh, said... Not a fan of you. <laughs> <laughs> she said it's a bit too much for her. And that... <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? It's not for you, bitch! She said, I'm sorry. Pamela? I'll, I'll probably get killed for saying that. But my mother, killed. Yeah. <laughs> my mother taught me, don't go to a hotel with a stranger. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's, you're talking about one specific yeah. case. <laughs> and plus, I saw you and two stranger dicks before. So don't act like <laughs> she had two different yeah uh, videos, yeah. sex did, videos. Yeah. yeah. Did your mom also take tell you not to take a load on a yacht? <laughs> <laughs> I, By the way, I said that holding my <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that That's the load that you took. Hey. <laughs> you came from Stardust. Yes. That's how you Stardust were Stardust and I laid. I have always thought that it's like a missed opportunity that she doesn't have like a Broadway show Pamilton. Oh, with Lynn Manuel. Right? I'm always like, I feel like she could do something. She's like that, an American figure. It would be the first time that I would go to Broadway. <laughs> This Just Sunday, to Pam Greer. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I would love that. This Sunday, at 8 p.m. Cashmere will be hosting a show, Jersey Poor at Branded in Brooklyn. And let's be honest, I don't know why you bring anybody else in here for Dish. Uh, He's Cash the best, oh, oh. best ever. He's the keep best. It going. So funny. Around. Nothing is ever gonna keep, keep him down. down. He's, He's the, the best. best. Around. I'm out of breath from hearing that song, even though I wasn't running. Too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just good. Yeah. Really a tough one. Uh, this is going to be my last dish no. for today. Oh, Ever? Dish. <laughs> but this week's dish segment is presented by Dish. Get extra action with NFL Red Zone from NFL Network on Dish at no extra charge. Dish tuned into you. To learn more, call one eight four four call Dish or go to Dish dot com. You don't find it a r little ridiculous that Dish is brought to you by Dish. <laughs> <laughs> Football this week brought to you by football. <laughs> so, oh, now they're saying fired. Uh, what Earl told us that he resigned. Oh, yeah, because on the, the there, there's two separate reports. They're saying that one is saying that he Fox is saying that he resigned. Other news outlets are saying that uh, the president asked for his resignation. Wow, that's yeah. funny. I'm seeing that like. Oh, wow. Fired, fired, and then over here. Because I think the quote in his letter was, per your request, I am submitting my resignation letter. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, fired. that's right. <laughs> that's definitely fired. But I love how he's per your request. Like, go out on a professional yeah. email. <laughs> per your As request. You yeah. forced me. <laughs> per last email. I yeah. wanted to just say, remember I brought this couch from home. <laughs> and I'm taking it back with me. <laughs> So my last. I feel bad, right, for just sessions. <laughs> yeah. You know? Worse. Good guy. <laughs> Likeable sort. Yeah. yeah. Humble. <laughs> ben Affleck is terrified of sex tape. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck <laughs> is terrified of sex tape. Affleck. Ben Affleck. <laughs> ben is terrified of sex tape of him might drop with his uh, ex playmate. Um, he does not remember filming a sex tape or letting her film a sex tape but according to friends he was so fucked up for the summer that they were together that there's a good chance she could have just caught him off guard oh. either having sex or just being drunk or on drugs and uh, she said to a bunch of people she's gonna be the next Kim Kardashian 
Man. Mazel tov, yeah. yeah. I would just try to pre-release. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> get it out there. Here's my dick. Send it to Sundance, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, I'm, well, he's really going through something, but Jennifer is luckily doing well on her own. Thank you, Next. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Gardner co-wrote that song. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is Jennifer doing? No. She's a new boyfriend. She has a new that. boyfriend and a new show. So yeah. It's, yeah. Year of Garner. Yeah. Okay. She's, I only know, she's dating Matt Damon. I think that's weird because they were all too close for that. Eskimo Brothers. <laughs> Her last movie I know was like considered one of the worst movies of the year. Um, by who? Just by everybody. The internet? Not me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be up to... Who calls it that? Just like what was this movie about? The people who calls Amy Schumer. It was about a child abduction. Huh? Ooh. Oh. And a revenge oh, movie. Oh, Peppermint. Mm -hmm. Peppermint, yeah. yeah. Delicious. <laughs> Peppermint Patty, yeah. Yeah, that's delicious. <laughs> That was considered. It was like that and Gotti were considered the two worst movies of the year. But um, if you talk to my mom, she said Gotti was a fine. <laughs> movie. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Yeah. She loved it. She probably masturbated yeah, through the whole thing. <laughs> she was in it. How couldn't she? All right, this I don't have this confirmed yet, but someone told me that Jeff Sessions jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. <laughs> no. Oh my god! Wait, wait, it's not that high. Oh. <laughs> He's swimming with crocodiles now. <laughs> But what do you want to do? Plug? I would like to plug, yes. Oh, yeah. All right, this Saturday, November 10th at, Hi, baby. at 2 p.m. at the Sirius XM hey. Studios here in New York City. Ron's hosting the panel, That's Offensive. Can Comedy Survive the New Sensitivity? On the panel, Big J. Okerson, Ari Shafir, Lisa Traeger, and Yamanika Saunders. Go to theinterabank.com for free tickets. Four edgy comics. Talking about laugh on the edge. <laughs> I'm a cowboy. Steel wheels. Uh, I think it was wings, not wheels. <laughs> wheels. Steel wheels was uh, Rolling Stones. Steel horse. Steel horse, thank you. Steel wings was Kansas. Well, that my wings that steel I truly die. Adorable. She's so cute. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look. Earl's waving from over there. Well, give us another story now that you got the pressure off. Okay. <laughs> give us one that didn't make it, Vito. And take your time. Don't try to be professional. Here's Just be a fella <laughs> talking to his friends. So there's this Cabin. actor that was on Better Call Saul who was uh, suffering from bipolar disorder and uh, actually cut his own arm off in an attempt to get more roles. So he cut his arm off and then told people he was a wounded vet. Can I tell you something? Then you got a job with me, I'd say. <laughs> Anybody willing to do that? So he cut off a healthy arm. He cut off a healthy to say arm. say that he was a wounded vet. To say, call himself a wounded vet. I think I remember seeing that guy in the crack scene, right? He uh, was buying crack and he had the, the I, fake arm. I didn't, I didn't see the episode he was in on Better Call Saul, but he was also in The Men Who Stare at Goats. Just as a, as a, That was a long time ago. He's been doing this for a while. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'll and just he, say this. And he made that himself. And the Oscar the goes to <laughs> the guy from Better Saul. Yeah. Saul. How, um, how did he Gaga. get someone to agree That's to what? amputate his arm when it I wasn't? Think he did it himself. Yeah, oh. This story is starting to sound bullshit. You're right. <laughs> Why didn't that make your fucking top ones? Why are we talking about these other stupid stories when you had a dude who cut his own arm off because he wasn't and a made a tinker toy arm <laughs> he wasn't a celebrity so i didn't know if celebrity it that, hey because he's not having a hey. vegan thanksgiving Flo yes thank you <laughs> hey everybody he, this bitch is eating turkey <laughs> hey everybody big news kevin smith is having a salad <laughs> cashmere should be donated every week am i love it crazy love it Love to be here. Yeah, he's so good. I bet he doesn't have this dish for you, though. Well, what, why are you being competitive? <laughs> it's Kevin this... Smith's side dish list. <laughs> he's got green beans, <laughs> arugula, and that's it. That deli sounds delicious, right. though. With a lemon vinaigrette? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> this is my sports dish of the day. Oh, it's Marcus Russell. Uh, you remember him from like 15 <laughs> years ago when he got drafted by the Raiders and was a bust? Turns out that whole time they were giving him game tape, he was coming back to the coaches and saying he watched blitz packages. They were giving him blank tapes to test oh. if he actually watched it Ooh, that's hysterical <laughs> blank tape baby. well that is because like in your i when you said scotty pippen i thought that was like about pippen the musical so uh, he really that really is i was like oh 
okay. Didn't you, know. All right. You should stay away from this story. Yeah. Dish. Should shut <laughs> Gail down. And shut Cashmere down. No more. Scotty. But we learned about spray tan. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Larsa yeah. Pippen. You got suddenly to see her. Earl sat up. Was looking Sorry. like oh, <laughs> Scotty Pippen. Now he's speaking my language. <laughs> Pippen. Hmm. Pippi Longstock. Ooh. What what I don't know what is that. yeah, but Pippin the musical. What is even that about? I've watched it. I, know, I felt like I've I was nuts, and I don't know. I actually have never seen it. Oh, Ben Vereen is in it, but it's like magic. But it's, it's something like uh, that. Yeah. Who's the famous uh, guy who they named the hands after him? There's somebody. He's like a dance director. Oh, Fosse. Oh, Fosse. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of the Fosse's things. Oh, okay. So Fosse throws scents out the fucking window. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. You don't have to follow anything that makes a, a lick of sense. Mm. Is there a lot of tall people in it? Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I do have a, a Fosse story for you. Now, uh, remember the famous actress who broke through? She had married Sam Shepard. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, Jessica. Um, Jessica. Lang. Lang, oh, yeah. Right. Yes. So she had also, early in her career, dated Fosse. She was in All That Jazz. So she came in and did the show here. Uh, right before you start, Gil. So she's older, but fucking gorgeous. Yeah. And knock out. And I had read the prep, so I knew, you know, the famous people she had dated in the past. So we have a great time talking. And we're all done with it. And she goes to leave, and she picks up her bag. And a book drops out. And it was about Bob Fosse, her former love. Ooh. And she reached down and grabbed it. And the way she looked at me, you know what I mean, was heartbreaking. Like she she was embarrassed that she maybe was she was like reading oh. her about yes. her. Love that got away. Oh. Yes. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. She is a talent. Oh, my yeah, she's God. unbelievable. I love her. And that's when I said, if you need anyone to have sex with you, <laughs> I'm always any here. time. But right after that, she was in Louis C.K.'s uh, oh, yeah. thing. Um, what was that? Jasper and Pee Pee. Horace uh, and Pete. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it wrong. I thought it was Jasper and Pee Pee. I thought Jasper and Poot. Yeah. <laughs> Poot. Poot and Poot. Yeah, Poot was the best part of the day. Let's all admit that. <laughs> Kashmir, you're the best, buddy. Oh, you're the best. We will see you love soon. You. Love you. So good to see you again, Gary. Yeah, I know. Yes. We'll do this more. Right back, Bennington. Welcome back to Bennington. Uh, this Saturday, November 10th at 2 p.m., Ron will be hosting a panel, That's Offensive, Can Comedy Survive the New Sensitivity? Featuring Big J. Okerson, Ari Shafir, Lisa Traeger, and Yamanika Saunders. Go to theinterrobang.com for a chance at free tickets for this Saturday at 2 p.m. And Tammy Pescatelli's in studio. Yay! Hey, Tammy. Hey. Look at her holding the baby. I'm already a baby hog. Uh, <laughs> Everybody knows me as Auntie Baby Hog. Yeah. <laughs> Look at she's going, wait a second, is this the first Italian she's ever seen? Yes, <laughs> it is. She's, she's, a, a, she's already got better IMDb credits than <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to glum on to her. Tammy's Aww. performing at Howie Mandel's Comedy Club at the Hard Rock in Atlantic City, November 20th through the 22nd. Cool. HardRockAtlanticCity.com for tickets. And Tammy's new special, The Way After School Special, is coming out soon. When is yeah. that going to be? Do you know? Well, I don't know because mm. I'm I'm dealing with a bunch of editing stuff. Right. Um, which is something that they don't tell you when you produce something yourself. Right. And you ask friends to help you that you have to actually work around their schedule. <laughs> now, you did this at, at your old school? My old high school. Remember it's, we talked about yes, that it's here? Yes, so yeah. brilliant. Yeah, well, let's see if I can get it on before somebody else did it. But right. yeah, I did it at my old high school, which is, let me tell you something. It's one thing to make strangers laugh. It's a whole other thing. To make someone laugh who knew you in single digits. It's terrifying, right? It's it really, really, really weird. It really was one of the scariest things, like, because you can't pull anything on them. Yeah. They know you, you know? Mm -hmm. oh. I just uh, <laughs> accidentally had something I was performing, and a guy goes like this, Ron, it's me, Turtle. I haven't seen him in 30 plus years. He's sitting in the front row, just starts talking back to me. Then there was all these other friends of mine in the thing. 
And I just dropped everything I was doing, just started telling old stories. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, there was a, a kid that always inspired me. He was like a couple years older than me. He was just this, this fun, cool kid. He used to write Bubba on tour all yeah. over the desks everywhere. <laughs> like, cool. And I'm like, <laughs> I, like I guess Bubba. it was you that was my inspiration <laughs> yeah. because I've been on tour ever <laughs> since. So it's your fault, <laughs> Bubba. But it's, you know what's funny about going home and your friends is they start talking to you. As if you are just left the conversation, know. you know, like crazy people just pick up what you spoke about seven years ago. <laughs> you know, they just right. walk up and go, hey, remember that? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I guess. And, uh, it's, it's so funny because people will bring up like memory did. Like some of it is not even pleasant. Remember when you did this or whatever? Oh, yeah. I hate when people do they that. Get, uh, had no problem. And I'm like, did the, is it that close to their minds? When they're there, or did they kick in with me? I have a group of girlfriends from college who, you know, at this point, like, I've known them since I was, like, 18 years old. Yeah. That when they, like, met my husband, they had to be like, hey, you don't know this, bitch. And I'm like, don't be those people right. who are trying to tell old stories. Yeah. And, like, what? Like, you're not telling positive things. And by the way, <laughs> like, she's not less crazy now no she's just crazy with one person <laughs> right well let me explain something to you that's what every story of me in my 20s i used yeah. to be an animal is like oh timmy got in a fight with this one <laughs> she was brawling in the alley with this one she never gave me back you know i never gave her back yeah. her earrings from holding them because she was punching this girl at the concert <laughs> no one ever says oh she worked and worked and worked yeah no God bless her we're really proud time. of her work ethic yeah and how hard she's she's look at this baby yeah Oh, she's like wants to be on the go all she, the time. I think yeah. she wants to be on the mic. I think she, she does lean does. into the mic. The mic is interesting to her. <laughs> it is funny. It's funny how they know what they're doing right away. My son is 10 mm. and uh, playing football this year. Wow. And I realized that that's what I'm supposed to be. I don't know why I work so hard as a comic. I'm yeah. supposed to be an NFL player's mother. I'm sure. supposed to be in the stadium in a jersey going, that's my son with a bad facelift. But it that's what I need it to be. It doesn't concern you at all? You're, you're Safety-wise, you're like... I grew up. Yeah. My, my, don't forget, my father played football. My yeah. brothers coached and played. So, no, because almost any sport you do... And how many brain cells did I lose in a condo with people smoking up, who knows what they yeah, smoked right, yeah. back then. And even if I just walked through a comedy club, millions of people smoked back then. I yeah. mean, 400 people would be in a room smoking and blowing it all at me on stage. It's so. very, very true. I remember in the club that I had, I looked up at Larry, the cable guy. I don't mm -hmm. even think he was Larry yet. And I saw smoke coming out of his mouth as he was talking, and he wasn't smoking. Oh there was my just so God. much smoke in the room That's that really he was gross. kicking it back out. I've never seen that anywhere else but in that club. Oh, like yeah. every inhale is Every just inhale horror. you're bringing in. Someone then, else's lung yeah. smoke. Yeah, well, when Christopher Reeve's wife died of secondhand smoke, I'm like, oh, that's it for comedy. Right. Right? Then yeah. shortly thereafter, they outlawed cigarettes. Yeah. So, but you could always find pot Was that smokers. like the first public case of that where they, they were saying, oh, that's from se secondhand and how smoke? Do you I think so, that yeah. Instead of, you know, living near. But you'd had blah, asbestos blah, blah, blah. in yeah. your house or yeah, whatever. Whatever. You, maybe you yeah. had kryptonite in your bedroom. I don't know what you had. <laughs> uh oh. It's a baby. <laughs> she's really trying to stand up. She's too little for that. She really wants to. Yeah, but she's your daughter. So yeah. he's like preternaturally moving. <laughs> Look at this. It's funny, too, how like life changed. I found this special that I did two months after I had my son. And I'm talking about all the things that I had planned to do. And I'm going to read him a book a day. That ends, Gail. <laughs> all of the things that you hope that's why if he gets hit in the head with football who cares yeah. it's really <laughs> I think it's funny that like how quickly you feel different than you did just like a couple months because she's only three months old mm -hmm. but a friend of mine who's pregnant I was asking her oh do you want my bassinet by, uh, by the time you have your baby she'll be grown out of it and she's like no I don't think I need it because I have plan to do this and she's like and I do plan to have him in a crib by four months I was like <laughs> okay bitch <laughs> like right. you'll well, see it's not a puppy that you can yeah. crate right. like exactly. that you know <laughs> although I do crate my husband when I'm out of town I'm not gonna say <laughs> but yeah you have like there's no way you can plan because you really don't know what kind of baby and what kind sure, of person this know. is gonna be you can make all the plans in the world about how you're going to parent yeah. somebody, but I don't know what kind of kid she's going to be yet. Well, that's the best thing I learned. 
uh, just to put just parameters, just make sure, like bumper guards. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said, my job is to be the bumper guards at the bowling alley. Just let him do what he needs to do, find himself. He, the teacher was telling him, you know, this is a couple of years ago. He was drawing and drawing, doodling too much during class. And he was drawing these like, I go, well, did you look at what he's drawing? He's like drawing these really funny little cartoons. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, it's too much. It's too much. And I'm like, are you? Why are you cre- curbing his creativity? Because you have four cats at your house, and no <laughs> yeah. one, right. no one, no one has ever told you anything <laughs> nice forever. Man, I I know this uh, woman who she's like uh, an educator herself. So her daughter has this question, uh, and they they ask her to define. Uh, something that is essential. So uh, define, use essential in a sentence. Yeah. And so this girl writes, I think uh, cupcakes are essential <laughs> for life. That's like her joke. She wrote like kind of yeah. a joke. And it starts with, I think. So the teacher marks it wrong and she has to go in and go, look, it's not a big deal, but I'm just telling you what she did is exhibit something that was creative. She didn't say air is essential for life. Yes. She's like, I think cupcakes are essential for life. She like kind of wrote uh, a joke. Yeah. yeah. So it's like weird that their their instinct is just like stifle creativity sure. and yeah. give me the exact answer that I want. Right. That's why or, I did my special at home. At my old high school, yeah. because I told you before, my guidance counselor, when I said I wanted to be a comic, she was like, no one from here has ever been on TV. If you want to be on TV, you're going to have to rob a bank. Yeah. Wow. And I was crazy, you know. But like, that's, that was, that's the same kind of town I grew up with. Like, yeah. if you showed, like, some kind of thing, people would go, no. Like, everyone, like even your friends would go, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's People not from around here don't do I that. I remember I wore combat boots in high school. And like I literally got bullied by the teachers, <laughs> not the right. not the kids, because they knew it was stylish every day. Oh, did you? Did your father see those? Yeah, he saw those. He can't. This is who I am, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they can be bullies. There's no oh, doubt yeah. about it. They can be bullies, especially to the funny kid, where they're like, "Keep an eye on this kid. He's on his way to jail. You'll be laughing at him now." And you're like. Hey, hey, he's my friend, and yeah. he's yeah. fucking funny. <laughs> Meanwhile, the whole mech teacher was banging one yeah. of our friends, and we didn't even think anything was wrong with it. Right. And we were like, oh, did you? You would see him come out of her room on a study hall, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, you, you guys hooked up? You know, I don't even think we said hooked up. We said, do you want to get some? <laughs> hooked up seems nicer. <laughs> Nobody thought, I'm sorry, baby, cover your ears. Earmuffs. Yes. Earmuffs. <laughs> She's adorable, though. Did you just want to hear that? Yeah. It's the best sound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except it's cute to hear a baby breathe. It's not so much my husband snoring in his sleep, and I can't yeah, take it anymore. <laughs> who's, lo- who's loud? Are you you're breathing or Vito's? Vito's breathing is loud. Mine is loud. Wait a Vito's second. Are you guys louder. sleeping together? <laughs> Am I missing something? <laughs> Did I miss an episode? <laughs> well, Vito's is without a doubt. Uh, he has sleep apnea hardcore. What are you sleeping with him? No, I'm not. That's what I'm saying. Sleep apnea. I'm gonna say because of his heavy breathing, he definitely has sleep apnea. But I, I don't think Chris is a smoker, and he's fat, and he doesn't work out. <laughs> I, I'm a vapor, and I'm fat, and I don't work out. This could be like The Bachelor, but for the worst people. Ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> and instead of instead of giving him a rose, you yeah. give him one of those those breathe right strips. <laughs> oh, have you ever tried those? No. Like you were in a football game. No, I actually I did wear it in football. When I played football, I thought you had to wear them, but they always just like fell off with the sweat. Because <laughs> your nose is so Oh, my sweet Vito was the kid who rolled around in the grass just to look like he had some grass stains on his football uh, pants. <laughs> oh, my sweet Vito. So do you miss LeBron in Cleveland? Or are you okay? Yeah, I don't care. He just wants to be famous. That's yeah. all right. It's not about basketball. Oh. You miss yeah. LeBron? Okay. Okay. I got it. You don't like him either? She, hey, listen, yeah. the only thing in Cleveland is that they all had to burn their casual Friday outfits because oh, yeah. they can't wear LeBron jerseys anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm more upset over they, they fired Hugh Jackson from the Browns. Oh, yeah. Right? Last season, zero wins. This season, two wins. That's a 200% increase in production. <laughs> and you're going to let him go? I'd have been yeah. asking for a race. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the reason for that in the middle of the season anyway. I mean, what are you doing? You're not going to make the playoffs either way apparently there was like uh, there was problems with him and the offensive coordinator and the management didn't like you anymore obviously because they went one in six he's a one one in two seasons 
Two. And, That's and what he just said. Two, Do you not hear two. my production quote? Yeah. <laughs> and he, he said he was going to fire the he was he was going to fire the offensive coordinator, and then they stopped him, and then management fired both of them. So I think that doesn't make sense. They're no. horrible. Yeah. That they're, sounds like a Cleveland logic. <laughs> it, well, it really is. I, yeah. I was doing a show in Pittsburgh, um, and I, the people were like, oh, it's the Browns versus Pittsburgh. I'm like, no, no, no. We, it's, it's, it's like picking on the slow kid. You can't. Right. We're not, we're not even a football team. Like, there's no, we have no hope anymore. You don't even get mad at the Browns. You get mad at yourself. Yeah. And I was afraid when they fired him that it was my turn to coach. <laughs> like, I've been trying to <laughs> Everybody's going to get a chance. <laughs> Everybody's going to get a chance now. Yeah. Hilarious. Teddy Pescatelli is performing at Howie Mandel's Comedy Club at the Hard Rock in Atlantic City, November 20th through the 22nd. HardRockAtlanticCity.com for tickets and our new special, The Way After School special, is coming soon. The Way After School. Yeah, it's Way special. After School because I can't even tell you how. Yeah. What point did you think to yourself, I want to be a comedian? Were you out of school long? No, I don't think I've still even come to that. You, <laughs> you never my... have completely committed. I haven't. I'm still. Yeah. No, you know, it wasn't. I, I wanted to, I first I thought I wanted to be an actress because I never, I've told Gail this, I never thought that I could be a stand-up comic because the women that I saw, I couldn't relate to. Right. They were all older, married with kids, talking about their sequins and face. I mean, literally, and that's exactly where I am now in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I couldn't relate to it. and that, But I used to sneak into comedy clubs. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And uh, there was a woman who came through. I got a job working as a, waitress and one for the summer and a woman came through and she wasn't funny but i thought i could do that right. i said it out loud and my brothers dared me and i'll do it at that point anything for 50 bucks you yeah know? yeah <laughs> that's me by the way for those people listening that's not the baby that's me remembering my life back in the innocent but times i agree with you i think it's always better to see somebody who's not good at it and go, oh, right. I could do that. Then to see somebody who's great. Because I remember when I was a kid, I went to, to see Billy Crystal mm -hmm. in, a, in a club. And I went with some friends. And I'm like, hey, you believe me, you're going to like this guy. He's on Merv Griffin. Yeah. He's really funny. Uh -huh. And he came out and he was real funny. And I'm like, what a, didn't I tell you? And like a half hour goes by. And I'm like, shit, this is still going on. And then 45 minutes. And then by a, an hour 20 it was almost depressing to me because I'm yeah. like, how could this go on? And it's still fucking hilarious. You right. know what I mean, I could understand the amount of time to be funny that you do the tonight show, but an hour and a half was too much. <laughs> too I, much I Glass did this thing where he said that it's sometimes with creative people, it's your taste that can hold you back. Right. So you, right. if you have really good taste, you, whether that's comedy, you like you read really good books, whatever that, that taste level, when you try to start to do that thing, you go, well, I know good comedy. This comedy sucks. This isn't very good. And yeah. so that can hold you back. So what you really have to do is power through that time. Like don't let your taste Stop your creativity while you're growing. Why didn't you tell me this years ago? I know. Where <laughs> were you? A, a genius, bunch right? of times, you know, companies have said, we want you to write a book. But I love books so much. Yeah. And I know what I can't even write a proper email. And they're like, and then they're always like, we'll get some money. You just talk to them. It'll be a book. I go, I don't want to. Uh, I loved books too much. Yeah. To do that. Sure. But see, you're letting your taste hold you back from doing something. I should have taste for shit. Yeah. Like yeah. Ira Glass does. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that show is terrible. Well, yeah. You know what's funny, too, is that I think it. I have never. I've never really. I remember they did that TV show that Jim Carrey does. Uh, what's it called? Dying Laughing. It's really yeah. good with yeah. everybody on it. And the first episode showed the guy after The Tonight Show killing himself. The day after my first Tonight Show was the most depressing day of my life because I hadn't thought past that, you know, I'd mm -hmm. never. And then I I've always I've been afraid to do anything other than stand up for the longest time. I see all these other people with these crazy successful careers, but mm -hmm. I was afraid to go audition. I just wanted to stay in my lane, stay in my yeah. wheelhouse. Right. And the moment, honestly, that I got married and had a kid, my life changed because stand up wasn't my God. You yeah. know what I right. mean? So then it got to be funny because there was not any pressure. I don't know that, you know, I don't ever say that I'm the best or the greatest at anything, but I'm better than I once was because there's no pressure on it. What happens happens right. and it's funny. That's I think it's so stunning when you, so when you were watching that and you saw 
that he felt like I reached my goal. It's only down from here. You're like, oh shit, yeah. that's what happened to me. That's yeah. exactly what happened. You can ask Don Myrera. I called him and I'm okay. like, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll do it. What am I supposed to do now? I never thought past this. Like, I grew up in a different time in comedy where stand up was the end all be all for me. Yeah. You know, and I guess that's exactly what I got. And yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting heckled by, yeah. by an infant. <laughs> I'd have come to your job, baby, yeah. and kicked the bottle out of your mouth. <laughs> I'm just having I bet this. You pooped your yeah. pants right now. <laughs> what are you saying? My jokes are <laughs> shitty for. I'm just having this uh, little fantasy that. Uh, Tammy's my second wife, and we're over visiting you and the baby. You know I mean? Isn't she good with her? In this, in, this Mormon, in this Mormon family that you've created. I just have to have soda. That's all I'm asking for. The rest of it, yeah. as long as I can have a Coke. Oh, man, I watched like a really great Netflix. It's actually yeah. like a British show doing, but they like followed... Uh, a polygamist, polygamist family, yeah. and I was just obsessed with it. I just like crushed through it the, the and watched British, like five the, episodes. I didn't even know they had polygamy over there. I thought no, no, they, so it's a British documentary, but they came here, so oh. it was just kind of interesting. But, but is it was it like Mormon British, or, um, yeah, it's what, whatever, of yeah, what a, whatever that is, like the yeah. It's funny because more strict Mormon that you that even that I hate to sound like the this old lady Gail, but even that changes because I remember I wrote a joke about it, but it's not as good as what I'm about to tell you uh, that, that I used to watch those polygamous documentaries and really have this women's ire like what's wrong with you mm -hmm. you don't accept yourself for who you are you want to take an eighth of a man you know and now I'm like oh my god. That seems like a way to go. Yeah. Someone helps with the kid. You get yeah. other people's money. Other than the finances of like dealing with like having 27 kids in your family. Yeah. Other than that, it doesn't seem like a bad. Uh, in the well, shed you'd deal. have to live in in the backyard because you all have <laughs> right, matching right. sheds. It really is like, <laughs> I mean, when people go, oh, of all those responsibilities. But, you know, like sometimes five people open a bar together. Right. That's a strange thing to do. Yeah. If if I I just of the whole thing of whatever adults want to do, I don't know why you would tell adults, oh, it can't be three girls and two guys in your family. You well, know, it whatever very, it is, it is. It was a very weird thing because you know, in one of the episodes, they go down, you know, kind of trying to show their support and say you can't outlaw this, and you know, it shouldn't at least be a, a jailable offense. <laughs> And it's are consenting adults. It's like, right. I, like, I don't really see the problem with it. I only found out years later that these people that uh, were in this. Yeah. She's watching TV. She's well, watching the news, by yeah. the way. That's the either she's very upset over the elections or she's super yes. happy. <laughs> well, she's trying to figure it out. She can't believe Jeff Sessions is going. What? This has been Jeff the, Sessions was fired. the only eternal, uh, attorney general during her entire lifetime. <laughs> she's like, she's, do we even have any other attorney general? <laughs> Wait a second. She has never le lived look in at a, her looking at her grandfather. Jeff, yeah, the Jeff Sessions. Uh, World, <laughs> uh, Jeff, Jeff Sessions, Sessions free Yay! world. What? What's going on? Here's the funny huh. thing about her. I'm noticing she likes you more from a distance than when you're up on her. <laughs> That's yeah. me. I was just, That's yeah. me for sure. She's yeah. just like me. Look at her She's talking a to me now. Uh, it's so cute at this stage of the game. And then when they won't leave you alone a little bit <laughs> well, later, you're like, please, could you go do something? What's <laughs> funny is like, it's adorable what she's doing now with make it like trying to talk. But when they do form words, right. that's when you're like, shut up. <laughs> I'm on the radio right yeah. now. <laughs> I know. I was on a business call yesterday. And my kid's like, I need more whatever you get in Fortnite, whatever the hell that is that they do. That, I don't know what it is. It dollars, pesos, pence. I, Uniform skins. I don't know what it is. I I really don't. I'm like, leave me alone. I'm trying to <laughs> scream at the I, poor I, kid. Go back and play your video game. I said to someone because they were playing and they were having fun. And I go, oh, is this a game I should be playing? And they're like, no, it will take you too long to learn how to do this. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you learned, you know what I mean? Like my, <laughs> what are you saying about me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he told me that straight up. I yeah. said this four nine. I go, that looks like a lot of fun. He goes, Mommy, <laughs> you can't do the dances. I go, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do the dances. <laughs> Wait till your friends come over. And that's when mommy's gonna bust them right out. <laughs>
Tammy Pescatelli is performing at Howie Mandel's Comedy Club at the Hard Rock in Atlantic City, November 20th. Juju, that's her plug. Come on. HardRockAtlanticCity.com for tickets and Tammy's new special, The Way After School Special, is coming soon. Oh. I just, is it okay if I put the baby outside in the hall? <laughs> you don't mind, do you? Just leave. I just don't give the baby to Vito. That is that what we, I should have yeah. had embroidered on bibs? <laughs> Vito can sell a white baby like that for some decent money. That, that's how his mother got him, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Right. yeah. It yeah. was very funny when, before you guys got down here. I, I had her when a gal was off to the bathroom. And then Cousin Brucey just comes and knocks on the window when I'm in here long. Going, is that yours? Is that yours? And I'm going, life is too Did weird. Did you just go, no? Yeah. <laughs> she just said, yeah. no. Like you just I have a random this. baby. I found this baby. This, this was in the prize closet. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel, though? Like, you came back to regular stand-up, mm -hmm. and you had put it down for a few years. A lot of years. So what was the onus that you went, okay, I'm ready to pick this up again? Because I think I was around for a couple of the first sets, yeah. but where you went, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. Well, what happened, and no one's really, this is why it happened a little bit. Big J asked me to do a couple of things, Big J and Christine. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that I, and it was fun, it was cool, but then one thing that I did did not go as well as it wanted okay. to, and I'm like, okay, fuck you, let me see, and you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I was just going back to prove, and then before I know it, I'm doing it. Yeah, that's wow. so cool. Yeah. And it's back in your veins. That's the hard part about stand-up, is that you can't... I mean, whatever's happening with the word police, whatever is happening yeah. with the people getting sensitive, like there's, you can't do a show unless you are a marquee name, right? Uh, you know, like the, the Radio City Music Hall, even you, you can't do a show without someone being upset, but there's always something within your soul that wants to make that one person who doesn't get you mm -hmm. converted right. except for now i don't care anymore and and once i had a mother right? that person is my mother-in-law <laughs> <laughs> so i don't care about that. it's very very funny because i was with uh jerry seinfeld and ricky gervais today and to what a let down I am yeah, from no, you. No. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you the truth. This is way more comfortable. So, uh, <laughs> and less weird. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. But, that, but to hear Jerry still ch talking basically about Chase and the Dragon, you know what I mean? Right. Like, still want to do that thing. But I thought he was interesting because he was telling Gervais, why do you want to do a special? Work on the act. Work on the act. Don't. Why would you throw 100% of the act away? He goes, I'll throw 10% a year away. Yeah. And you're just going to give that away. Yeah. You know, and it's really um, now an old school way of looking at it. And he's saying there's nothing more valuable than the material and the material gets better the longer you're doing it. Doesn't Agreed. Get worse. Agreed. You know, I have um, I'm, I'm going to do a album. Mm -hmm. That's so funny, but it's going to be this old special that I was never able to sell because we filmed it uh, right as HD came along. Yeah. So mm -hmm. no one wanted to touch it. And I was listening to it and listening to the old jokes. And I'm like, OK, these are these are good. And then I turned on Netflix and Jerry has a special that was all his old material. So I'm like, yeah. OK, maybe I'm on the right track because people can hear where I once was if they want. And then they'll hopefully right. see the new stuff. Or um, not, I don't care anymore. There was, uh, and I don't. I had never saw the special that he did up there, but I remember years ago he had a New York City joke that, and they were literally talking about putting uh, this kind of, you know, when they put the tram in and stuff, and people were enjoying it, some kind of uh, a ride that would be like a roller coaster mm -hmm. through New York City, and Jerry said. That and this is back in the seventies. That it would be the only roller coaster where people would scream when they were on the bottom of it <laughs> rather than the top. Right. And like he was a young guy when he wrote that. And I'm like, that's fucking genius. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's genius joke. Yeah, <laughs> there's always one or two jokes I think in a comic's life that gives them momentum, right, to go on another year or two. Yes, like that's I, very, very wow. true. I think the first joke that I ever wrote from a voice perspective, I was probably 10 years into it, and I wrote a joke about my brother's wife. I said, um, in our family, we tell the truth. 
Uh, so if you're an idiot, we call you an idiot. If you're a dirt ball, we call you a dirt ball. If you're a whore, we call you my brother's wife. <laughs> and that was like, yeah. well, it was true, but it was yeah. like also like that was my point of view for the first time ever. I did something that was true and and real and I felt good about saying it and it resonated with people and that kind of propelled me like if you don't ha- well though there's a level of delusion too I think sure. in stand up you know I never come off and go oh, I crushed but you hear comics say that all the time I just I'm, killed why aren't they going me back I murdered that yeah. place <laughs> did you okay yeah did you I Colin was telling me about doing it for a long time. He says the writing is easier now because he's not just trying to write jokes. You know what I mean? He's trying to write points. You know, he's trying to make points about things and he's a funnier person now. But when you're young, you're trying to write for some imaginary stand up in your head. You know right, what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, there were different. I think now's a kind of exciting time. When I first started, they were like these jokey jokes, right? Yes. Or, or, you know, kind of uh, just, you know, this, the Tonight Show sets that weren't really personal. Yeah. Uh, and then it got the alternative or the alternative crowd came, right? Alt comedy. And they became kind of personal and dark. And now we're somewhere in between both of those. I sure. think it's a kind of cool time. I think that alt is now the opposite. Those who aren't kind of talking about certain things that are like, you know, they don't, I'm not trying to make a point with my set. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just want to make you laugh. My point is for you to buy tickets to my show and then want to <laughs> come back. You know yes. what I mean? That's what the point is. I don't, if you want to vote, good for you. You yeah. should, but I'm not going to tell you that in the middle of my jokes. <laughs> right. I think very few people have had their minds changed during a comedy show. <laughs> Hold on, I'm a racist. <laughs> right. oh, yeah, I'm just figuring this out now. I, I realized that when better. Roseanne tweeted. I had no idea until she tweeted that. And then I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I thought the bitch was white. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you so funny? So funny. It, it, the, the level of, I don't know why people didn't know that she, like, we all have a certain level of mental handicap, I yes. think, in comedy. Hers is documented, right? And so I think it's hard when you hold people to standards of normalcy when they yeah, have documented, you know, mental problems, yeah. breakdowns. I think that like that was that. very, I mean, that was very apparent, especially afterwards if people didn't realize it. And I mean, everybody on that show must have known that she was, yes. yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, I look who she married. Yeah. You know, how crazy did you have to be to marry Tom? <laughs> oh, and but in on and she's in a, a nut farm yeah. in Hawaii. Like yeah. that's anybody who lots of people have, you know, some mental illness. You knew that you knew that I, she probably barely could get insurance for the network. But I don't know why the network wasn't taking care of her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. You here's the deal. You, uh, anything you tweet comes through our office. You know what I mean? We'll hook up the computer so we look at it before it goes out there. <laughs> Ray Donovan, her yeah. man. That's what yes. I need to be. I need to become a cleaner. That's what yeah. I want to be I, because I'll just be like, I, even even at the White House level, like whatever. I don't care who you support, but let's not always put our first thought out. You know, I learned oh, yeah. that from Twitter. Like that, sure. I learned it the hard way. Maybe we should download on our friends and family's phones some kind of Twitter filter app, you know? You know, uh, like in the old AOL, you could go back, look at your sent mail and delete it if it hadn't been read. Because I'm like, everybody was on an AOL then. Yes. So you would know, you would be connected. Right. And then you could go, you know why I changed my mind? <laughs> right. Because most of the time when you fucking answer back to somebody, so you're you saying, should be saying it. Dial up hid, hid racism. Yes. <laughs> it was so helpful. Dial it up. It was so helpful. Well, another thing, we, most racists used to just yell at their TV. Like, thank yeah. God my Uncle Ray did not have Twitter. <laughs> we heard him right. talking back at Walter Cronkite, but his neighbors didn't. Right. But I still don't even know that he was a racist, right? Like, back then, people just had adjectives sometimes. Yeah, I will, I'll... I'll take responsibility that he was a racist. <laughs> well, it was like me. I didn't even know that Me Too was a thing. I mean, yeah. I know the hashtags, but I didn't know that sexual harassment was part of this. I used yeah. to live in condos with two guys. Right. That's how it started. When you're a road comic, if you wanted to work, you put up as a woman. I put up with stuff that 
I'm like, oh, I guess I was. I guess yeah. I was sexually harassed. But I just, I thought that was the nature of the beast. Well, you then know? let me give you a ride home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag backseat. Yeah. Tam's, <laughs> Tammy's performing at Howie Mandel's Comedy Club at the Hard Rock in Atlantic City, November 20th through the 22nd. HardRockAtlanticCity.com for tickets. And Tammy's new special, The Way After School Special, is coming soon. Now, did you shoot this yourself, or how did you do yeah. it? Yeah, it's yeah, exciting. Yeah, it was really exciting. Got um, it was really cool too because we took the kids from the high school and paired them up with the professionals. Mm -hmm. So not only did that guidance counselor not get to steal my dream, but not some other people's, and we established a scholarship. And I even spoke at the commencement. Wow! Right? Yeah, it was funny because I, uh, everybody was like, "Please don't say anything. Please don't say the f word. Please don't say." That. And I'm like. What do, I mean, why would you ask me if you thought I was going to go up there and bite a bat's head off? Yeah, like, right. why did you? But I did tell him, I started with, um, I go, everybody has told you that you're special. They lied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. you were, but yeah. now you're not. Now you have to work at being <laughs> special. I'm like, they almost fell out of their chairs. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know why that whole, you're a special thing even matters to people. I remember there was a very, where I grew up was a very middle of the pack. Just get in the middle of the pack. That's the okay. safe spot. Do you, you want know? to know what my theory is on that? What's that? I think it's a lot of, it's the divorce culture where one parent wanted to be loved more than the other. And it was a competition between the parents yeah. mm. to try to, you know, get the, the garner favor from the child. So well, that's interesting. I know like my dad never took me to miniature golf or go-karts and that's because he stayed with my mom <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly you Listen. have to be a weekend guilty dad <laughs> right to go out and do stuff with your kids on the weekend i never bowled at all <laughs> nothing i played pool because that's what the bar had a pool table yeah. that was it <laughs> but how old like uh, you know i uh, i had a friend that i used to do radio with and he i guess was a kid of the 50s and he, his parents were divorced, and he was told other people didn't even want him to play with their kids. That's how bad divorce used to be. Wow. His mom must have been hot. That's yeah, probably his why. mom. <laughs> yeah, like, do not play with that boy because he comes from a broken home. And now, I kind of feel like it's been, we've almost come back the other way. The people wait so long before they get married that they had three or four living the things that would have been divorced but aren't on the fucking record book right, right. you know yeah right that's the thing that bothers me well everybody knows divorce is contagious yeah <laughs> because <laughs> it really kind of is in a way because you yeah. have to have conversations when some couple you're close to breaks up then you have this conversation about you know who cheated who did this and what i will do to you if you do that to yeah. me like and it's an <laughs> unnecessary conversation right. that rocks your relationship you're like hey i didn't even what are you talking about i barely put makeup on today <laughs> yeah. blowing the postman i just had this conversation that was like from a friend of mine who is he's older but he's never been married uh, and he doesn't have kids and so to date women his age He's really weird because he's not divorced. Like almost not right. having a divorce under his belt is like, why? What was wrong with you? Right. Like, yeah, why didn't anyone creep yeah, pedophile? Like, yeah, like yeah. did you? Why did no woman want to marry you up until this point? Yeah. It's way creepier than like this, you would be my second wife. It's like, oh yeah, that happens to everybody. Yeah, that yeah, is that's true. True. <laughs> and I do think when you, uh, by the time you get at, like a lot of people are like, oh, this happened. But once you get older, you're like, who gives a shit? Yeah. Who cares who did what when? Yeah. What's and the it difference? I couldn't. I love my husband, but I don't know that I'd divorce him simply because I can't get into this whole swipe right culture. Yeah, it would be yeah. too much. It'd mm -mm. be too much. He doesn't even wipe right. So I <laughs> why would I swipe with anybody new? <laughs> I can't do it. It's not like you're going to find anybody better. You're going to find sooner or later the same thing. What am I going to do? Show them pictures of my old body? <laughs> this is how hot my body was. And I know this is what you have now. It's like showing pictures of the car you had in high school. <laughs> oh, is that it for us, Christopher? That's it. Uh, Tell you, Pesca. That's it. That's it. <laughs> bones. He gets better and better at this, doesn't Slowly he? Slowly he turns. <laughs> Tell you, is performing at Howie Mandel's Comedy Club. At the Hard Rock in Atlantic City, November 20th through the 22nd. Go to hardrockatlanticcity.com for tickets. And Tammy's new special, The Way After School special, is coming soon. All right, gang, that's it for us. Uh, let's see you tomorrow. Take care.